Kai is a character that is uh, definitely pretty strong, has been working out uh, more and more as time has gone on, a character that needs a little bit more development. I mean, the more simple a character's uh, game plan and toolkit is, uh, the more depth you kind of have in your gameplay with it, right? Yeah, and that's a great example to point out with Kai, because the same thing with Geo. Geo's evolved so much since the game released, especially with the balance patches. Uh, she's absolutely a monster now. Great wake-up DP here, though, from Blue to get some pressure off of him. Jump over, avoids the cross-up. Can go with the full screen fireballs here. Gets the jump in. Party time for Giovanna. Yeah, and this is kind of a difficult matchup for Kai, too. Geo does such a great job at negating fireballs and getting around Kai's slower buttons and just jumping on top of him, not allowing him to escape. Yeah, very reactive. Uh, okay, with the punch there with the close slash, a very reactive matchup for Kai for sure. Uh, 6P is the answer. Uh, using S Fireball to try and bait out Geo, get her jumping a little bit more often. And using 6P, 6P answers every single projecta, uh, every single uh, Giovanna special attack. So. Definitely utilize the people's elbow as much as possible. Yeah, and I like how Blue's there trying to create some space. He definitely wants to play on that far slash range or a little bit further away from it, but <laughs> Mizu is just rushing him down relentlessly here. Yep, had to cancel that there. It was a little too close on the block. Oh, yeah, a little bit of a weave back there on the attempt at the Tatu. Goes straight into the super. That is certainly going to kill, especially with a 50 other meter build up. Mizu, that is a quick first game. Yep, and that's what can happen if you don't know how to handle the pressure that... Uh, Giovanna puts on you, you just get steamrolled like that. I mean, that can be tough. I mean, that, the big thing for Blue is we've got to establish ourselves enough of a fireball game to encourage Mizu to be jumping a little more and then start to work in the 6P. If you're not comfortable playing that fireball game to get them off the ground, you need to start bullying with 2D. 2D, walking up with 2D can be pretty good if Mizu is going to go for these like uh, odd timings on like the 2D of her uh, of her own to try and break through. So yeah, one of Kai's best poking tools to be honest, and you get big reward off counter hits as well. But uh, all, Blue also needs to try and slow this down. Mizu is just controlling the pace of this match, putting him in constant scramble situations. It's just breakneck break speed. Yeah, drop combo off the JD, misses the punish on the secondary. The cross too far for the 6P. Pushed all the way into the corner, but the DP out. The fully charged dust, all right. Go for your combo here. And Mizu holds on to the burst. Look at the amount of damage that came off of that. That was awful. This timing from Blue there. Oh no, push to the corner now. Far slash connects for the second time. Had an RC, chooses not to spend it though. Oh, BRC, and that's it. Lights out. Stay on the rift attack, going for the slowdown. Very smart call out there. Going in, Mizu tries to go for the far slash straight away. All right, getting the jump and not looking to burn off of it, but goes ahead and gets a throw into the corner now. Oh, a few little trades there. Doesn't work out too much in Mizu's favor, though. Okay, wakes up with the DP, gets the jump in. Immediate match for Mizu. There's the 6P finally starting to get those answers. Not able to convert though off the far slash. Oh, using the RC to pick him up with the OTG to close out the game. Yeah, Blue needs to be a little more careful. Blue is uh, Blue is running into situations where uh, they are just kind of not, uh, I guess, interacting. Uh, while this is a reactive matchup, you still need to be like active in neutral. Uh, if you're not pushing 2S, if you're not pushing uh, like jumping normals, like preemptive JP is very good for stopping a lot of things Giovanna does. Uh, you need to be setting the pace a little more, like you said. Uh, it's all been Mizu. Mizu's been setting every single tempo, and Blue's been breaking out of those tempos occasionally, but he needs to be the one conducting. Yeah, exactly. If you're playing Kai, you're not controlling the neutral game. You're not playing Kai, you know what I mean? That is how the character is supposed to be played. He's supposed to lock down the neutral game and control it. Even though the jump-in hits there off the fireball, this is still significantly better for Blue. I like the game plan a lot. All right, that was a good burst this time, pushing out of the corner and getting the flip kick over the 2D. Okay, trying to go for the plus four, plus four again. Mizu respects it. There's a huge counter hit that ends up getting the burst out. Blue, so much just a different player this round, looking so good. Yeah, going to get the wall break here. Yeah, 5K, 6K. Have to make the real shock as we transition. And I like that Blue didn't attempt to contest there. No Giovanna's plush, just decides to back that. Oh, try to go for the throw, not gonna work out. That is gonna be a kill. Oh, that is Blue's round to win. That unfortunately just barely escaped. But again, the adjustments are there. Blue is looking so much better this game. Yeah, but we're at set point now. He only has one more life left to give. No more mistakes here. Oh, Dash is up with the close slash. Try to delay it. Here comes the strike throw, continuing. Again, just 
Why his dome getting clapped? Super breaks the wall. Huge advantage here for Mizu. All right, blocks the overhead this time. And a beautiful just block there, able to get the punish in the fully charged dust. No burst on deck for Mizu, has to hold all this damage. This could be Blue's round. Quick start this off, careful for the burst here. YRC instead, BRC's backwards. 6P would have been the answer, but no. Oh, a missed reaction there from Blue. He BRC's backwards and gets to see everything. He has the, he has the burden of knowledge. He whipped throw. I think yeah. he might have been trying to go for an anti-air 5D there. Maybe, I was gonna say. Shut down one. some of these disc, disc setups if they're not real. It's such a high-reaching button, able to hit on both sides. Crosslock gets the burst out. Radio Red Maze. Good on the air-to-air -air so far. Drops his combo. That's okay. Maintains pressure. And I love the micro dash before Lush Shaker. Yeah, but the FD pushing Lush Shaker so far out here. We jump out of the disc. What kind of whiffs afterwards? Monday is going to be able to take through the wall off of that. Yeah, positive bonus and a really nice life lead here. Still with burst on deck. Goes ahead and spends it not to be locked down in the corner here. Yeah, it doesn't want to give this round away to the double overhead. They able to secure it. Yeah, unfortunately spent that burst and immediately got knocked down back into a mix. Wakes up with the super, why not? I mean, he has a, he has max meter there. I feel like as Monday, there's just no reason not to go for it. Absolutely. I mean, even if they were to block it, you get a mix up there if you are see it. Ooh, trying to go for the fastball down, does not work out. Good mix up for Red Mage, but a, a better block for Monday. And there it is, that close slash anti-air. Such a great tool hitting directly above Melia. Dash through, was looking to bait the burst, had the right idea, but gets knocked down now. Gets up here for Red Mage, gets the TK Bad Moon, and I love that he RCs up, pulls him up high enough to make sure that he's able to get uh, the, the wall break. Yeah, one more touch is going to close out this round here. There it is, the JS counter hit as well. That seems like an underexplored option I really like from Monday there. S disc into fast PRC was really smart. I actually really like that a lot. But yeah, trying to force them to get up into the air, covering all your positions. Low, extends further into the corner, jumps out of the close slash here, but the 2D connects, didn't believe, and goes for the S disc. I do like the option though, using S sticks to try and push as far out of the corner as possible, trying to just create some space. But gets put right back in though, unfortunately, here. And Mundank really close to closing out this first game. Five kids a too far away. Bad Moon, oh my god, Bad dude, Moon from, the, from the moon, bro. I was gonna say, that was an astrologically correct placement <laughs> of Moon. Jesus. Still available and a burst. Burst on both player side actually. Radio Red Mage, you gotta be looking for a gold burst here when you can. Oh, okay. <gasps> Was gonna let a rock. Had every intentions. Capels across. Still can't make it. It's a really scrambly situation here. Dangerous for both players. And I like the Capels little by little. Tries to find the hit. Does connect once. Dashes forward. Again. Same situation. He has max meter. There's no reason for him not to. Yeah, no. Mundek is not afraid. I mean, why not? Um, the, even if you whiff it, it's a super, so you can always RC. It's not like uh, DPs, where a DP, if you whiff it, you're not allowed to RC at all. For you just get out for free. For context as well, uh, Mundek is a is a Marvel Three Spencer player. And that is a he has bionic arm is in his blood. He has no problem going for the wake-up reversal, spending the meter to get out of trouble. He is, he dominates his other game doing exactly that. That's just the lifestyle for him. Yeah, he's a meter-hungry <laughs> player, right? Duel one. Let's rock. Okay, so the first game on the board for Monday. That's a long first game for yeah, a million meter. I was just thinking that. <laughs> That's a really long first game. Well, both these guys are playing a, a very slippery play style, too. Maneuvering around a lot, trying to play a lot of neutral. Not like a lot of million mirrors you see where they just kind of rush in on each other. That positional burst from Radio Redmayne was so smart here. Goes up from low, close last to follow, blocks the TK Bad Moon. Monday's defense holding up really well, but unfortunately, that's the case against Milia. You just can't block it all. Oh, yeah, not forever. You're going to get hit eventually. You have to find the right openings to escape. And that is a quick round one this game. Yeah, Redmay said, let me not waste any y'all any more y'all's time. Let me Let's see, dash straight away. Trying to go for kind of disrespectful mix-up here from Radio Redmay. Smells blood potentially. Uh, not able to confirm off that air counter hit, but that's alright. Gets the second overhead dash through. Same thing there, command movement to get across. 
And there it is, catching with the close slash using the hair car. We're gonna carry all the way to the corner here. Oh, that little cancel to go into the hair car, jumps up, gets the hit, and beats the off. first! All right, Radio Red Mage is feeling himself now. He uh, He's definitely turning this around. Meter for Monday here, though. Plenty of time to spend it. Oh, blocks the YRC, but no punish. YRC in response, got the cross up, a little too much time though, blocks the TK Bad Moon, he's just got the sense for it. Trying to fish out the air with the 6k. And there's a throw, no OTG here, we're gonna get a little mix up. Okay, he's gonna use all the FD. And catches with the JH, Monday tried to go into the air to contest, but was a little too late. Yeah, so evening the set count up, and I see MFCR rejoicing, he said, no matter what, I find Amelia excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. He's already charging the first DP. <laughs> of course. And MFCR just won Juicy over the weekend. Fire. Yeah, the Juicy Monthly and a great uh, great Grand Finals against Anima. Ooh. Good set. It was a very good set. So with a one-to-one, -one, Mundank, honestly, Mundank just needs to do a better job of spending meter. Mundank is finding himself Ooh. with a... Uh, Let's rock. Finding himself uh, in positions where he has a lot of meter to spend and is just not being able to use it for RCs, things like that. Yeah, no, he's holding on to it for those situations like where he's throwing out the supers or in for defensive situations where he throws out like YRC. He's not using it uh, very offensively, mostly defensively here. All right, here's the knockdown. Now Radio Red Mage really turning this up with a really heavy life lead and was able to take the first too. Throw though, Monday back on control, gets the gold burst out, that's the best possible situation. Get yourself out of trouble and you get the meter. Wakes up with the super though, way too far. Yeah, gonna go ahead and PRC that to keep himself safe. 2D, able to escape. JK barely connects. And here's gonna be the wall break. No meter spent though. That's a lot of damage for Milia too. Well, I mean, she's doing combos against Milia, right? <laughs> yeah, that's fair, no guns. Well, cross up and all this meter, same situation here. YRC to break out, but he's too far. If it was a situation where Wake Up BRC would come out, that would be amazing. But again, Mundek is holding on to his meter a little too much. It's better to spend it poorly, I think, with BRCs and BRCs sometimes just to use it than it is to just hoard it and never have access to those tools. Yeah, absolutely. And the really interesting thing you saw there at the end was how Radio Red Mage backdashed after throwing out the disc to try and bait out the super because he knows Mundank really likes the super in those high critical situations. All right, both players pretty much tied up on a life here. Block. Continuing on, there's the RC, good use of it there. Oh, the anti-air close slash. Trying hard to bait out the burst, but Monday able to get the gold burst here. That's going to be really valuable. Nice conversion, incredible conversion. Can he kill, though? It's just enough. He oh. nearly dropped that combo, too. Yeah. He threw out close slash a little too early, but it's all right. Millie was still in the air. Oh my god. St. Brain's on there on the round start. Monday gets the better of it. No hesitation. And that's important from Milia. Cannot the more hesitation you show, the worse it gets for you, especially in the mirror. Yeah, hesitation is death, right? Next again. Dash up, drops his combo though. Radio Red Mage, one more chance here. With throw, allowing Radio Red Mage to fight his way out of the corner. But he's just gonna get tossed with the OTG, not quite enough to kill though. Full screen Ooh. hair car. Familiar classic. But drops the combo. Bad moon. Maybe do it again. Yeah, Monday was expecting it too. Radio Red Mage, little by little. This is going to be positive bonus here. And that was an incredibly. Uh, he may have lost this round right here. But that was an incredibly ballsy TK Bad Moon. He had no meter. If that was blocked, it was over. I like that though. I think that's part of the uh, part of the appeal of it for sure. Fabled sandwich. It's finally that you're old enough to drink now. Wow. 21 years from the homie Roberto. Thank you, buddy. I can see him. He's sitting across from me. I know. <laughs> Why'd you shout him out? He's right there. You could just stare at him. I, I, I mean, I do stare at him a primarily. I'm usually not <laughs> watching the game. I'm usually just looking at Roberto. He's, I mean, that hair, though. <laughs> Two to one. Monday can keep it up. Monday has found himself really settled in in the strike throw. The big difference has just been on offense. It's been a lot less left, right, a lot less high, low, a lot more 5K uh, shimmy type situations. No, but Radio Red Mage is holding their own. I mean, yes. that was a very close second game or third game there. And already starting off with an early life lead and putting Monday into the corner. 
Air to air works out beautifully. First comes through. Dab was such an unlucky burst there for Red Major. Put him in the corner. He's forced to use his own burst. A stroke of luck there, uh, to be honest, for Mundang. And there's the dash through. Challenging against the 6K, but getting pushed into the corner here. Watching forward. YRC in response. Jumps in after the YRC. And then sends themselves back to the corner for the mix up. That's the Melee Classic, right? You never expect her to put herself back into the corner. Ooh, dashing into each other a little too much here. Hair card does not kill. 2D also not enough. 5K, that'll do it though. All right, and both players should be able to get their burst back by the end of this round. And Mundek is definitely going to receive his burst back before death here. So we, he will have one chance, but gets the air throw here, putting Radio, Radio Red Mage into the corner. Yo, Kizzy oh, shout K. Out to Kizzy K with the raid. Bro, Kizzy coming through. What is up, homie? Really hope you're doing well today. Appreciate you coming through, guys. We are just getting started here. The first match of this bracket still rocking. So Monday. Right. He's threaten with the jump S's. Just look for what he can. Close slash comes through. There's the burst. Yeah, trying to fish out in the air with the JS not working. There's the YRC. YRC again. Crosses him up and yeah, Double. for the second time. And Mundek has opened up his new mix-up route. Since he's leaning into the strike throw so heavy, he's starting to get Radio Metroid ripping techs here. All right, you see he's trying to fish him out of the air with that close slash from Melia. Trying to use it as an anti-air here. Up again, converting off the disc here, hair car. And just looks for the OTG instead. There's the close slash, and he's gonna break the wall here, but with the RC instead of the super. Probably wasn't aware that it was going to get wall stuck, so he had already committed to it. That's the most likely situation. Close slash connects again, drops his combo. This is the chance that Mundank needs here. Could close the set with the YRC. Oh, the late JH to get the counter hit. And there's the conversion afterwards here. Radio Red Mage tying this up. Yeah, pressing us into a game five. Any Geos? Yeah, we uh, we had a Geo last game, actually. We do have a couple Giovannas that normally play in the bracket. Uh, that's one of the nice things about these tournaments is the uh, character diversity is usually pretty uh, pretty well. I think the character we see the least is like Jacko. And otherwise, we get yes. a pretty good spread of everything else. I'd say usually we get about, uh, it's either seven or eight characters in top eight. Yeah, it's most nice. likely. But here we are going into our game five. First game five of the night and our second match of the night here. Now this really could be anyone's game. Both these players are playing extremely well, but also playing different styles of melee, which is really exciting to see. Like you said, Mundek is a lot more strike throw, less left right. And Radio Red Mage is playing that more traditional mix up style of melee. Yeah, I got that burst out early though. This movement there, connection. Tried to bait the burst, it looked like. That time it's gonna come out. Nice, way to hold it from Mundek. The conversion to the knockdown, but not too much afterwards. Looking for what he can, gets the throw, and that's what we were saying. Mundank on that strike throw works out so well for him. All right, and I like the patience there on the offense, too, for Mundank. Anyone else might want to go for TK Bad Moon right away. 50 meter here for Red, uh, Radio Red Mage. Gonna find some way to use it. Bad Moon's again from the heavens, dude. And look at this corner carry, too, with the other Bad Moon. Got a lot of damage, but this is another situation where Mundek has meter. Yeah, YRC, and then swings straight away. And that was a YRC slightly above the ground, too, and was still able to land and get the 2K afterwards. JS connection. That's exactly how Radio Red Mage wants to start this off with no burst on deck. You have to hold all that damage. Yeah, the first time we've seen a dust at all in this. And then he says, a taste of your own medicine straight through with the grab. That's going to be a perfect leading into the final round here. These two are fighting over the title of best Melia player. And shouts to Yurikov for the subscription. Shout out to the of best Melia. 2D gets the jump in, burst comes out early, Monday, gotta find something here, close slash on the jump in, make it three times. <laughs> Hitting with just the tip, four of them in one combo here. All right, Radio Red Mage, yes. all right, close it out here. That's you have enough meter. Do. Oh, BRT, no, not like this, Monday, the momentum is rolling. YRC. And then the JH is going to close it out, Radio Red Mage taking it 3-2 over Monday here. Really like to see that. Kind of found their way into Strive as a well known for being one of the best Strider players. Uh, a, a, a welcome switch to Chip. And has been putting in a contention for one of the best Chip players too in North America, I would say. Also recently switched to Hitbox, so has been learning a new control scheme in the midst of it. But 
Geo doesn't care too much about that. Gun out is looking to try and keep the zoning going, but Marvello finds his knockdown. Yeah, so of course, Happy Chaos is going to have to juggle these resources. And if anyone's been watching Happy Chaos's developments, that entire meta of throwing out steady aim into reload steady aim is really hard to get around. But if anyone can do it, it's Chip with his speed. This is a problem, though. Three bullets is a meaty, yeah. Backdash there. Gets away from the beta blade. Tries to bait the burst, though. Marvello's not going to use it. That was incredible. He used his clone to eat the beta blade, allowing him to put himself back enough, and it delays it just enough so that he can uh, punish him for it. Also, a very important note, if you get stuck to the wall from Happy Chaos, and he's going to go for the unstick mix-up like that, if he reloads three bullets, the next move is always meaty. So you, if, he, if it's a three-bullet reload, you need to be careful. If it's more than that, it's, it's not real. You have a little room to swing. Oh, but there's the command grab here into the corner. Bro, continuing the pressure here. Yep. And that is, that's how the matchup's gonna go. I mean, if you get pressed to the corner as Happy Chaos against Chip, he's going to just, he's gonna open you up. You're gonna get all three. Yeah, this is absolutely where Happy Chaos suffers, right? He has no reversals of any kind at all. His super is not invincible. So once you get in on him, you have to lock him down and not let him escape. Continuing well here, keeping it mid screen to open up his left right options. Standing heavy into the late Rekka, but there's a great 6P. The 6P confirmed into Gun and the punish after the whip super, too. Oh, unfortunately got the back turn there, so wasn't able to get too much else. Blocks the roll through this time, though. Marvello's defense is adapting. And now look at the meter that Kudos might not get to use. Not only that, Kudo is out of bullets. Oh, uh, yeah, a fate worse than death, to be honest. And there we go, Marvello closing out the first game here. Yeah, finding yourself with no bullets in the corner against Chip, that is definitely a go next. You have to, you're going to have to find a miracle mash out or Chip is going to have to make a huge mistake. Yeah, absolutely. But like we were talking about before, that, that game plan that you see a lot of Happy Chaos players do with the ready stance zoning, Chip is a little hard to get that on because he's just so incredibly fast that he's able to get in through those bullet shots. He can, he can thread that needle a lot better than any other character in the game can. There's something very funny about very small lobby avatars to me. A little tiny scuba potential. Something potem -potem about that is wonderful. I don't know, dude. <laughs> Have you seen Lord Knight's avatar? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Marvello, first game up. Man. Geo had a huge signs of life, played really well for the most part. It's just, once you get, that's the nature of the matchup. Once you get pressed to the corner, it's all chip. It, it very quickly goes from like even-ish to like unbelievably chip favored once you once you have no real estate to back up into. Yeah, but this is absolutely, I was about to say, that's absolutely where Geo wanted to be, but Marbello just across the screen in the blink of an eye. That is what chip does. Go play to OTG. Go to H, try to delay a little bit. Oh my God, that's a, Really terrible way to get hit That's here. a lot of damage, too. Not able to get the full conversion. YRC for some defense. Let's focus, though. Still has three bullets to go. Little push blocks here. Trying not to use any FD, but might need to start spending that meter a little bit on defense. Oh, uh, I like that he tried to backdash the command grab, but did it just a little bit too early there. It's a little tricky. You have to delay that backdash. Oh, great press, but oh, tries to frame trap, and Marvello pushes way earlier than he expected. Yeah, speaking of uh, pressing. Okay, so extending here. I really want to see a little more FD from uh, from Geo, especially when you're seeing the uh, the Rekkas come out. On um, this first hit, Rekkas, you're able to oh, you're able to FD a little more and get some space to be able to press here. And, and Marbello is just putting Geo into the blender here now. This is not normally how we see Marvello play. They're not someone who really leans on Alpha Blade too much. Yeah, Marvello's Marvello's style absolutely for the most part has been like a slow and steady footsie style. I have said multiple times that he finds more counter hit 2D than any chip in the world. Absolutely. But he's just turning it up. I mean, that's I think it's just a matchup based adjustment here like we said, once Happy Chaos gets mauled. Exactly. I mean, if you think about it, he definitely plays that like with push with punish style of chip, right? But against a character like Happy Chaos, if you're creating that space and allowing, he, he's not going to be whipping a lot of buttons. He's going to be trying to pull out his gun and shoot you yeah, absolutely. when he's at that <laughs> distance. So it makes sense to just be on him and don't give him the opportunity to even pull it out. If Marvello can do it one more time, riding the momentum of a perfect Ooh, here. All right, the target takes the curse. The curse is not too much of a, of a factor to Marvello there. He just can run through it. You have to do something beforehand to scare him off of it. Yeah, and here's, that's exactly where Kudo Geo wants to be in that reload stay here. 
Just shoot, reload, shoot, reload. But the moment that he runs out of focus, Marvello is right on top of him. Aguirre is to break the clone there. Dash is up, dude. He just presses the Dax Mastro and catches him so quickly. Yeah, 6K into Fast RC into a full conversion here. Mix up. Blocks from Geo, but again, I mean, there's a little more of the Marvello we're used to seeing. Counter hit 2D. Yeah, but the 6K, Kudo Geo is just holding down back for his life here. Potentially final round. Geo's got to find a couple more touches here. Tries to swing it round. Start Marvello finds the counter hit. Drops his combo, but that's still okay. And there's the tick throw into the corner. Starting to work in that strike throw game, but a nice backdash and burst punish there. Hold the cross just to get the corner back. Very nice. Finds the throw. Reloads one. I love the little attempt. Gas yes, throws him as a punish there. Oh, and the fast 5D into gunshot to break the wall here. Kudo, Geo. That's all we need to see if Geo gets some room to fight. There's a burst. We've got that space established now. Curse is applied and gets out of the corner. Yeah, but has to wait for this focus to fill back up before they can really do anything. It's about to be put through the wall here. No meter spent for Marvello. Wants to hold on to it. Yeah, I think that's good because BRC4. Now we're already pressed in the other corner here. Delays with the Rekka. And that should be it. It absolutely will be. Marvello going up 3-0 over Kudo Geo here. I love Marvello going for the exact frame trap that he did there because that is definitely a, like a, a heavy respect mix-up. Anji is a character that I feel like most people don't expect to see a lot of, but uh, damn, we get a ton of Anji. We absolutely <laughs> we get a do. Lot of Anji, is Wafe in this bracket? I don't know tonight, but maybe. Right now we got Mike Nada rocking Anji. Having to go up against Yurikov, though, this is going to be a tough matchup. Again, very nice. Yeah, Able to break through the wall. Mike dashes backwards here. Trying to find what he can against Yurikov. Close slash, though. Too good of an anti air. Yeah, Yurikov in full control right now, closing out the first round with a perfect here. Yeah, Yurikov's so slippery, man. That's one of the most important things about playing Milia. It's almost more important as Milia to be hard to catch than it is to have a good mix-up game. The mix-up game is like secondary. As Milia, being evasive, just like that, earns you enough hits on its own. The mix-up yeah. game is definitely the icing on the cake. And not only that, but when you're playing against a character of the caliber of Yurikov, definitely who made top eight at Arc Revo East, it is definitely not an easy, uh, not an easy matchup no matter who they're playing. Another extension here, breaks the wall with the super, positive bonus, huge advantage. Oh, goes with a 6k into Lush Shaker, but not enough to kill there. Looking for chip instead of the chip, we're just gonna get a 2k Yurikov. Very dominant first game here. Mike, honestly, a lot of it just comes down to never really found a time to get started. Needs to do a better job of stopping Yurikov from navigating the screen. Yurikov was just free to roam. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, Yurikov was doing exactly what Milia wants to do, which is not allowing your opponent to play the game. That is her archetype. She wants yeah, to knock agreed. you down and just keep the mix going to make you look like you have no idea how to even play fighting games. <laughs> yeah, that and it's, it, it is it is very much declining neutral at every stage. In uh, on like standing footsies, no thank you. I would rather be dumping around, capel, I'm flying around, I'm just looking for that one shot. And then on the ground, like you said, just spending meter to make sure it's, you never have an opportunity to fight back. You mean she likes to avoid the grounded neutral base footsies that Guilty Gear is known for? All I'm saying is, if Amelia is playing the way that they want to play, you won't even get to gauge the skill level of the opponent because they won't get to show you. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> sure, for sure. Oh, oh welcome with the counter! <laughs> Man saw that biking trailer and said, I want a counter now. Because the super breaking the wall again. Positive bonus, huge advantage here. All right, trying to cross up onto the other side here. Goes for the run up throw, but a great jump out there from Mike with the punish. RC4, close slash. Dad somehow crosses up. Secondary late jump in cross up there. Yurikov threatening taking this second game. All right, creating some space at the start there. Of course, yeah, Yurikov loves to be airborne, loves to use Melia's multiple air dashes to move around. And that is an incredibly high damage combo here for Melia off the starter that he got. A really nice stuff from Yurikov. And Anji is not a squishy guy either. He's got a lot of guts. Careful for this burst here. You know it's coming. Max meter for Yurikov. Plenty of opportunities to bait it. Double overhead. Good blocks here from Mike. But how long can he keep it up? 
All right, gets the guard break in the air. Mike's defense looked incredible there. Still hasn't been able to find the hit, though. Oh, and there's the burst bait, too. I mean, it's a combination of Mike having trouble finding spots to actually get to fight, and Yurikov is uh, just blocking so well. We've only had to see him block, like, three strings, but it's been flawless. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Anji is another character who leans heavily into that strike throw game, and when you can't get that started, you know, there's nothing to really be scared of. Yeah, Especially when you're a character like Melia, who's so slippery. Anytime Mike, it forces Yurikov to block, Yurikov's jumping out. Yeah, and it's not being time. shut down. We'll see, Mike's got one more opportunity here. And get this run back, or if Yurikov is gonna continue and march on through the bracket. Right, again, round start situation. Yurikov likes to back up here. Create some space, gauge what your opponent's going to do. And there's the gold burst pushing into the corner here. Yurikov is hungry. Yeah, as far as reads go, that's about as big as it gets there. Using the burst offensively. All right, the 2K. Here's the pickup going straight to the wall. 5K and then going to RC. That was a situation where uh, Yurikov actually could have let the sliding knockdown happen if they were aware of it. Yeah, Yurikov said, nah, I just want to fight. Stand me back up. Play disc, goes to the frame trap, crosses up somehow. The FD from Mike, but it's not enough to push him all the way out. And Mike has been doing a really great job of actually jumping out the throw attempts, though. His defense is really good in that end. Mike finding opportunities now. This is looking really good off the anti-airs. Getting another JD to break the wall. Not quite enough to kill, but only one more touch. Yeah, and Yurikov, no reason not to go for that. Goes straight in for the super, straight in for the PRC behind it. Good defense from Mike. And set point for Yurikov. All right, now Mike playing very patiently, too. There's the early burst on the very first touch of the round, but the air throw here from Yurikov is going to push Mike to the other corner. Well, Shaker 10 hits, got the knockdown. Continuing to be the aggressor, finds the throw. All right, this BRC, same mix-up as last time. Mike able to block it. First spin we've seen, it's successful. But the gold burst, things are not looking good. Toss it to the corner, maybe I'm wrong. Come here's curse, wake up super. Okay, 50 meter here for Mike. Shouldn't die off of this. No, oh my god. Okay, the drop close slash, he absolutely would have been dead with the wall break. Block the double overhead, but there comes a low. One more touch, and there's the throw. And as soon as you see that FD, you know they're in a situation where they cannot tech the. Uh, it's like 51 49, Leo. I think Leo generally has higher priority in this. Bro, every time Heavy Day comes on, I get scared because of my phone's ringtone. <laughs> 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 All right, early 2D here, getting the mix. To the corner, he's able to get the burst out. Clone to break out of the corner, does not want to wait for that. And he's just throwing out these preemptive 6Ds, trying to stop any kind of approach here from Leo. Throw. Like the delay. Wake up 2K, I like that. All right, 2P, 2P, 6P, get off of me. I like the way that MacBenz is playing here, and there's yeah. a big counter hit, 2H, Shades of Slayer. You've got to know that is coming there, dude. The helicopter is not the answer in that situation. MacBenz spacing himself out well. Since the spacing is over, though, RC's forward. You got to try and end it there. A bad DP, but that's okay. MFCR back on his feet. Max Meter gets the DP frame trap. All right, goes for the run through. Another one put into the blender. Look at this, just left, right, left, right. Again, oh, again, every single time. What could go wrong, dude? Another cross up to close it out. That was an incredible way to end that. MFCR, what a comeback. And the most impressive part, still has burst. And that's what I'm saying. MFCR is a nutty Leo. That man literally just every single time is just cross up, cross up, cross up. Not, cross a, care, up. not a care in the world. Actually, not a care in the world. Get a down back, though. Get a chill. Far slash connecting. Lots of blood back for Macmans. Nice little shimmy, but missed it. And there we're talking about the DPs. Look, that, that punish is not going to prevent MSCR from DPing again. The burst. Yeah, knew he was able to just down back there. He's going to go for the longest combo route possible. Macman's not going to spend his Damn, burst until late? Burst. I don't... Oh, my God. That late of a burst is a huge question mark for me. I feel like you're in a situation where as soon as he hits you, you're just gone. He's gonna just kill, you know he's gonna kill you. I would rather have my burst baited there and get back on my feet and have my health stop draining. That was, what, what's even more unbelievable about that is that MFCR was just ready. 
Yeah. He's just ready to RC in response to the burst and block it. You would think at that point, if they're just going to take it, they're not going to burst by the end of it. <laughs> but yeah, MSDR taking the first game here. And Macman's is going to stay on the Goryuki. No Anji. Got the overhead. Dash up. Again what a, with the overhead. What a follow up. All right, yeah, I like the back dash. Just afraid of the DP there from MSCR. That counter was dead, or that trade was 100% in the Gorgon's favor, but MSCR with no fear rushing straight in. But that guard says cancel. There's the throw. Got to stop him from going for these run throughs. All right, and that blood is building up, though. We are at level three. Macmans cannot afford to throw out another special move, or they will pop. Counter hit 2D. Finally, grabs the run through again here. I like that little combo. It kept him to the ground quick. Tried to stand him back up. MCR still holding on to the birth there. Looked for the 6P. The just block comes through and what a tech. And another just block too from MSCR. I like that throwing out the clone, but now he's gonna pop, and that's it. That's absolutely the end of the round there again. A little bit of mismanagement of the blood gauge there. MFCR takes advantage. Crown start 2K. All right, now we're playing some footsies. Patience here from both players, just trying to feel each other out. It'll be tough though. I mean, Leo does have a great in and out type of game, but you know, playing at that range against the Goryuki can be so difficult. And just this stagger pressure here from Macman working out in their favor, getting a big damage combo, dropping the end of it though, unfortunately. Yeah, but going for the clone, unfortunately, oh, PRC's no. backwards, it does not help. He's still gonna take a grip, and he still has burst. And he doesn't spend it. I mean, one more confirmed from MFCR, and this, this match is over. This round, excuse me, is That's, over. You're going to have to look for a gold burst at some point. MFCR down backing, bro. He wants to DP something so bad. Yeah, he wa he's waiting for the Fukio forward. Absolutely. KTD does it back dash. There's the clone. Danger through. It's going to lose a little bit of the meter here. MFCR, he didn't dash forward. No, Macmans could have closed it out with that and pops again. Uh, Macmans is dropped. Macmans is dropping these key combos that can close up these rounds. That that should have been over after the DP, but he just dropped it. Yeah, absolutely. And the far slash just didn't do too much else to follow up. That is another one on the board. And Macmans, are we going to see the swap? Or are we going to continue to see the Goryuki here? A lot of this has been getting aggressive and not finding his way with the blood gauge. We're going to stick on the Goryuki. Yeah, I guess Macmans feels that this matchup is is better for the Goryuki than the Anji matchup. That's ah, fair. I do think Anji does not do super well against Leo, so that makes sense. Duel Anji doesn't do well against Lockheed. <laughs> Nightmare's playing it slow. Good block there. 2K shimmies him out. Whoa, okay, MFCR. <laughs> Got a smix in right now, dude. What the hell? And the guard point, too, delayed. And you see, this is something MFCR really likes to do. He likes to stick you to the wall and let you bounce off. I'm not sure exactly what he's going for here, though. DP traded out. He's able to just chill. MFCR, no reason to extend. Doesn't even want to throw the fireball. No reason to. Right, trying to establish something with his 2S5H, but gets sandwiched between Leo and a hard place. MFCR, one more round to go. Looking for the 2S too far. Backwards walking forward. 2D catches him in his movement, and now MFCR kind of dropped the situation, though. Wasn't able to go. Uh, had, a situ had a potential party time situation, but couldn't get it. But there's the first. Oswaldo, MFCR is my son. I respect it. 22 months, Oswaldo, man. Thank you. And every single time Macmans, uh, every single time Beyblade is blocked, Macmans always creates space. I want to see Macmans be more aggressive. Instead of Pukioing backwards, Pukio forward and keep the pressure going. There's another throw on the run through, though. Blocks the DP. We've got to cash out here. We essentially kill him. We have, we have the meter. Yep. We're going to see a super. No, that was definitely an attempted super. Beyblade potentially is just swinging the two S trying to stop it from dashing up. Like that so far. And MFCR is just content to hold down back. Wait for his moment with the 2D rip. Trying to bait out the first here. 2P looking for the Beyblade too far away. It's just trying to bait him into getting this blood to pop. He can't really do anything here. Next touch is going to do it. And the jump, empty jump throw there from Macmans. 
Okay, evening up the rounds here. He's got a shot. All right, that round start DP, putting yourself really high up on flush. Going dash backwards. And that spacing, look for the 6P on the dash through. Does not work out, and this damage, all that damage is just from that one run through. And there's the DP from MFCR saying, get off me, getting out of the corner. Again, with the mix up, Magnus has just not been able to get out of the blender here. Okay, and that is enough to close it. MFCR, what a way to go there. Is able to take it down over Mac. Amelia is able to thread that needle so well. Axel has to commit so hard with his button, and she is just so quick. And as you can see, already Death Heaven is getting locked down in the corner here from Yurikov. Yeah, and you can you can demonstrate Yurikov already going for the most important thing in this matchup, which is attacking from directly above Axel. Axel's incredible attacking the 45 and like that 75s, almost straight up, but right above him, he has nothing to fight. You're able to get so much real estate. There we go, clipping Milia out of the skies. I like the idea of using the fastball, but Death Heaven ready for it. Side switch, Axel Bomber combo, gonna break the wall here with the round. 6K kills, very nice. That was a pretty combo, too. Yeah, that was a hell of a way to end that for sure. Having a couple crouch there. Double overhead, continues the mix up. Oh, wow, JK, JD into Air Snail. Yeah, so I think we've seen a few times here from Death Heaven already. Yes. Double, double overhead continues to be effective. That is a that seems like a really powerful option against Milia. That. I absolutely am too. 2S counter hit goes for the one bomber. Fast RCs doesn't get anything else though, and there's the wake up super from Yurikov. Not quite able to get the OTG, but gonna go ahead and get the throw to close out the round here. But no, I really like the way that Death is actually going into the air against Milia. He's not content to just stay on the ground. He's going with that rising JK. I mean, that's an important note. As we said, he's really bad at defending right above himself. But if you abandon going for preemptive anti-airs on the other options, you can not defend yourself in the air just like that. He's going up early to try and stop her. I mean, it's a pretty committal guess, but like worst case, you jumped and pressed K, you're pretty okay. But there's the Raymar just blocked on the Raymar to keep himself close here from Yurikov. Gold first gets blocked in the throw. Optimal punish there. I mean, when you see him land to the ground like that against Gold Burst, a lot of times Gold Burst can be incredibly difficult to punish if you uh, if you don't have your timings down. So you might as well just just chuck him. You know? Yeah, and that's the thing. If you guys don't know, Gold Burst does have full invincibility on the way down, unlike a Blue Burst. Yes. So it, exactly like Proxy said, it can be very tricky to punish sometimes. So you're a cop. coming back after an incredibly strong start from Death Heaven. Let's see if Death Heaven can. Recreate some of the more magic from the first game. The Yurikov is already adapting to jump back uh, K. Like, JK has been a really incredible answer so far, and Yurikov is already starting to take better angles. Yeah, and he's also starting to throw out buttons in the air, too, to preemptively stop uh, Death Heaven from jumping up at him. Yeah, JK versus uh, versus Milia, JH, uh, that is not a damage trade in your favor. So <laughs> no. Definitely, uh, definitely a big win for Milia anytime she can make that trade happen. <laughs> Dash, oh wow, God. command dashing through the round start bar slash there from Axel. Goes for the pull just to corner her, very smart. Oh, I like these double overheads here, a triple overhead too. Six hates to close the gap, goes for the bomber to break the wall, needs to hit, find one more touch. Death Heaven is playing Axel in a way that I honestly have not seen very much. This definitely has like a splash of Remy Celeste to it, but like it's a really unique take on it, right? It's like same same style, like same game plan, but is executing it in such an interesting way, like you said. Yeah, I know, but I really like it, and it's working out really well too against Melia. Okay, bringing the wall here with the 5D. The blowouts back and forth here in game two. All right, 2K2D, you have to hold this. Oh no, of course. Three close slash is gonna close out the round there with a perfect Amelia. What an anti-air. Good just block there. Found the cross up, but couldn't combo off of it. Gonna jump in. Oh, what a jump. H forces a burst out of Yurikov. I don't think he needed it there, but just wanted to get the real estate back. And the clash, Axel wins out on it and was ready with the charge too. Samantha, good jump over 2S. 
Tried to bait a burst that wasn't there, it looked like. Oh, PRC trying to fish him out of the air with the 5P here. Bar slash. Again, nothing. Nice jump angle here, Yurikov. He said no more bells and whistles. He's just double jumping into the, in that airspace. I like that Def Evan is not leaning too much, though, into 2S. When Yurikov does land with JH, it's not a counter hit, which is something that's really important. Uh, air counter hits on the Axel are incredibly devastating, so Def Evan's not even attempting. When he sees Milia in that, in that zone, he's just not pressing any buttons, just trying to escape. He's also doing an amazing job of not falling into the trap. And I say, like, the trap TM is Axels love Renson. Boy, do they like Renson. This is not a matchup where you are just throwing Renson in neutral. You are trying to steal turns occasionally and, like, maybe go, like, for some weird delayed cherry bomb stuff occasionally. But this is not a matchup where we are, like, game planning around Renson. It's very sparsely used. No, absolutely. When you have a character that's this air mobile, you're just asking for punishment. So, yeah, it's it is just so many better options here. Unfortunately, there the still he dashes for it. It's a lot of good room off of it, and it's gonna break the wall for it. Yeah, and that was in that situation, the adaptation from Yurikov, knowing that Def Heaven wants to go for that JK, rising JK, coming down with the JH to get a counter hit, and so much damage off of that too. That 2S. It's the Axe Bomber. Fast Bomber, too, is going to get the full pickup. No, the 6K misses. Yeah, unfortunately, didn't have charge, and the 6K was a little too low, a little too high, rather. Got blocked, chooses not to contest. YRC potentially? No, it's just going to hold on to it. That's burst, too. Yurikov going for the command roll, getting on the same side, though. And there's the throw to take that round there for Yurikov. I wanted to see the burst. I wanted to see him be a hero. I think Def had that one. Round starting, Yurikov dashes forward, gets the cross up. This time it is going to combo. Oh, uh, there's that strike throw. Sometimes when you get the hit, you just got to let it drop and run up for the throw. Let him know. Make it across. 2H. 2H, nothing. I like that. There we go. Going to get the Axe Bomber combo, but the great burst from Yurikov, bursting right before the Bomber connects. Yeah, once you see the Bomber come out, it is a safe burst point. They're trying to go for the Axel special on Axel. You better know better. And goes for the side switch, too. Didn't even need to. The Bomber was enough damage to close it out. Okay. Like that JP. Already starting to mix in JP to start to stop this horizontal approach from Yurikov. Burst for momentum in the corner here. But a great jump out there from Yurikov, recognizing that 6H from Axel on hit is zero on hit. Throw, disc, fake disc gets a throw. Do it again. No, it's the overhead this time. And the block on the TK Bad Moon. And same situation. Close slash is going to be the answer here. 5P, she low profiles it naturally running. Oh, and that's part of the reason this matchup is so cheeks, dude. Yeah, he swings tragic. five feet, and her dash is naturally low enough to where she just runs underneath it. Yeah, the unfortunate thing in this matchup, you have to be doing 2P and 2H a lot against this yeah, character. She really. can just slip in. And that's tough, too, because 5P is normally such a, a Swiss Army knife move. It's a great preemptive anti-air, stops, jumps, is able to stop a lot of players from, from getting their offense started or really getting move it, moving sometimes. But just her being able to threat of the low profile just invalidates one of Axel's. Honestly, 5P, one of his greatest tools. Absolutely. I mean, it also gets a little extra damage, too, if he hits it right at the tip. Yeah. Oh, man. Yurikov. Two to one. This has been a hell of a. This is one of those sets where if you have a friend, Amelia, or an Axel friend who's having trouble in the matchup either direction, this is gonna be one to send them. Yeah, no, holy they're, holy. they're having incredible answers to both of each other's habits. Six K, really good. Look for the two S. The two S is punished though. That's the danger of trying to stop an aerial Amelia. All right, the drop combo there, but the JH getting clipped by the close slash. And that is something that happens all too much in this matchup. Too close slash with Melia is an incredible anti-air tool. And there it is again to close up the round. Yurikov on set point now. That really needs an adjustment and fast. The round start 5S. He got punished for it last time. I'd like to see that bravery. Low profile. The jump in actually with the 2K, but it's not enough. Yurikov back to the races, man. Continuing to pressure. The just block. All right, counter hit 2S. Going to get a full Renson combo. Look at the damage on that. Oh, I think he's trying to go for his own throw there. It looked like an intentional whip. Goes for the YRC. Yeah. Away a little bit. The 2H, that's a punish. Oh, but Yurikov didn't believe in it, though. He's trying a little too hard to make the burst there. The burst, yeah, he's going to use it. So now all the resources off the table here. 
right, 2K, 2D for the mix-up. Goes low this time, doesn't work out, but the counter hit 2S. No, drops his bomber in a key moment. Bomber. Oh, no. Okay, okay. 2H. I would have oh. cried. <laughs> Not like this. I would have cried if he lost that round off of a missed bomber. Okay, breath, we're still in it. Slow slash. And put right into the wall here. No wall break, though, but gets clipped by the low. Was trying to look for a block on the bad move, but it didn't come out. Burst out. He's looking for the gold burst. Impossible. I love that. It was a great attempt. It doesn't work out, though. Burst is still available here for Yurikov. He's going to get the side switch. Not able to pick up. A wake-up burst there from Yurikov to get out of the corner. Just blocked. Tries to go for the hurricane. No, he jumps over it. That's the correct answer. And that's going to be it with the OTG. No. Okay, empty jump throw, and Yurikov takes it over Death Heaven 3-1. That was so that tough, man. That was so and tough. That was, it can be, it can be. This is definitely another one of those, uh, this is uh, for anyone that played Street Fighter, I like to equate this to kind of like uh, Abel versus Dalsum. Uh, Abel, uh, Dalsum's winning until he gets step kicked. Uh, if you get close slash or far slash by Nagoriyuki, uh, it's just not, you're not winning anymore. Yeah, <laughs> this is exactly how uh, Krieg is going to want to play this. Yeah, just shoot him. Well, why? <laughs> he, I, he can't hurt me from over here. Exactly, when I'm full screen <laughs> and I'm just shooting him, he's so big, like big body struggles so much against Happy Chaos. I mean, we're just going to be watching Duck Hunt for a little while now until Test Your Luck can figure out a way to get in. The Krieg is just, that is executionally difficult. That is, everything that Krieg is doing there is actually pretty hard to execute quickly. And one of the hardest things about playing against Happy Chaos is the tech, the technicality you have to play on defense is incredible. Just blocking, IB just blocking, like things like that are like, like required. You have to know all the gaps. You have to be perfect about it. But look at that risk gauge, it is up so high. Oh my god, two hits took out so much health. Test Your Luck does know what to do though. Nagoriyuki needs to use clone to his advantage to get in when the, op when the time presents itself. And using things like that, using Super Jump JH or JS to get in on Happy Chaos. Oh, close slash from the heavens, dude. What a high anti-air. Goes forward, keeps him in the corner here. Yeah, you've got to spend anything it takes to make sure you keep him in the corner. But now that he's lost the positioning, Krieg has such a huge advantage. He's going to break the wall here. Just, oh, doesn't break the wall. Uses the time to rebuild his focus. Confirm, full confirm here. Keeps him in the corner now. Yeah, into the side switch, out of bullets, though. Goes for the fast RC. He had to PRC because he was out of bullets, so he couldn't convert. Try and go for the frame traps here. Look at this pressure. This pressure here from Krieg popping off with Happy Chaos and just summons the car with a snap of his fingers. Yeah, I mean, that is that is really how the matchup goes. I mean, Krieg is, inc is doing incredibly well at executing the hard stuff, right? If you guys follow, I know everybody here follows Deb on Twitter. You see the stuff Deb's, Deb is doing. It is incredibly difficult to execute, but boy, when you get rolling and you have it down, rounds like that first round can just happen. But if you ever get caught low on resources or a rushdown character corners you, the second round is what happens. We got to see every aspect of the matchup in those one game. Yeah, no, absolutely. When a happy chaos player gets going, they just make this game look like time crisis. <laughs> At least I reload. Just boom, 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 boom. Okay, gets the curse back on. Reloading little by little here. Yeah, and you see every time he gets the shot, when Nagoriyuki is in the air, he's using that opportunity for Nagoriyuki falling to the ground to get his focus back. And this is, this is, this is GG's. Look at the blood on Test Your Luck. There's no way he can approach at all. Yeah, at that point, that's honestly just going to save your mental fortitude for the next game. Yeah, that was an absolute checkmate situation. With no blood on deck, no special moves, Nagoriyuki at full screen, there is absolutely nothing he can do unless Happy Chaos really screws up. 5k okay, OTG, and now we're back in that fourth situation here. Using the blood gauge a little bit more at this point. You just gotta jump forward, and when you're jumping forward, if you just block, it doesn't push you backwards. So you have to offer a jump, and that you have to just block the first thing he shoots you. And you need to do it over and over again. It is incredibly difficult to get across, but it is possible. But the mismanagement of the bullets one time from Krieg, Test Your Luck is here. Yeah, and this is all Test Your Luck needs. Happy Chaos, again, has no reversals at all. There's the counter hit 2D into the OTG 6H. YRC, head back up a little bit. And this is just a battle of attrition here. Finally, Test Your Luck taking a round. Krieg mismanaged his bullet count one time, and that's how the round ends. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's how much of a knife's edge this match can be on. 
Wow, just willing to press close slash in that kind of situation. Krieg with no fear. Definitely the same brain cell as Axel, man. Gotta be willing to swing in those situations. The blood pop with him cornered. This is actually a great situation for Nagoriyuki, but now... Oh, he's dead. Man, test your luck, went for the JH, but didn't have enough meter to convert afterwards. So he got kind of lost in the sauce up there. Oh, but the same situation there. I mean, another possible option there for test your luck is if you're able to buffer a Fukio, you can buffer an RC forward, and then you just block. Just just blocking is the key. You have to, it prevents you from getting pushed backwards. Yeah, I feel like also for Nagoriki players in this matchup, they definitely want to practice the forbidden dash. Oh, for sure, you have to. <laughs> to fling yourself across the screen. It is, a, it is an incredibly difficult matchup. <laughs> it's sad, but also Nago deserves it. I respect that. <laughs> I like where you're coming from with that. The Krieg, two to zero. Test your luck has had bits and pieces of shining through. Oh, but we've got to see it strung together all at once here, or Krieg is going to continue. All right, good early start here for Test Your Luck. We're trying to bait out the burst I early think as well. House of the Dead than Time Crisis. He's a vampire. Oh, you're right, yeah, though. You know, <laughs> sorry. Intrusive thought. Happy Cows, the light gun character. <laughs> oh, but dude, he's already he's already halfway down on his... Look at the blood gauge. He's just like you said, you have to adapt as best you can and move across the screen, but you have to just block these shots. There's no yeah. other option. See, at this point, it's just GG. Shake my hand. There's nothing to worry you can realistically do to approach now. Even a Fukio is going to fill his blood all the way. Yeah, at this point, just let it go, to be honest. <laughs> he's, he's, not, he's holding it, though. He is holding down back. He is not giving up, and I respect that from Test Your Luck. Craig, continue this dominance. Late round start, great anti-air and conversion, kept him cornered, now we have to keep him cornered. But Kree gets away, look at the blood gauge. Yeah, and oh, wasn't able to Fukio after that or else it would have popped. Oh, a nightmare situation as he continues to aggress, but now the blood is too high. But gets the 5k, 6h, not gonna pop here, finally gonna be able to keep, oh, not a wall break though. All right, test your luck, see, with a perfect here, this is what we're talking about, he just needs to get that early lead, he cannot allow uh, Creek to get in that full screen situation. I'm oh, sorry, DP Fukio is definitely the answer so far. Look for the fight, the fight whips. He burst, but he burst him on the wrong side, and now Creek is gone. And look at the blood, and this might be it. This might be checkmate now again. Trying to Fukio more, but screws it up here. Super focus, and the counter hit 5H. This is exactly. No, and there it is. Wrap it up. And I think that that is one of the most damaging possible combos you can do on Nagoriyuki straight after popping blood, is just shoot his ass up. <laughs> just one shot at a time. If you can get four bullets off, bro, the rest of his health is just gone. But all right, speaking of big bodies, Nagoriyuki against another fast character here. Marvello's chip. Jump in, able to connect. Doesn't get anything afterwards, though. Another huge counter hit. Times in a row. I mean, this is a little more the style that we see from uh, from Marvello. Oh, and the delay too to make sure that he switched sides. Just trying to go for the wall reaper. Dropped in early blood pop here, and you know Marvello is going to carry out as long as he can on this combo. Oh my God! My. Yo, believe it. It doesn't kill though. The magic pixel. Send it in. I can't even he see the pixel. See it. He needs to see it. The last Friday of the month. Far heavy slash really nice move punish. Bro, Marvello is striving right now. <laughs> All right, I like the back dash there. Of course, you know, just the run up counter hits here for Marvello. Ooh, and first uh, attempt at the command that we've seen from Marvello is back dash. And look at his life bar. This is the kind of match you're going to see from Marvello where he's going to play that more footsies with punish style game. But the thing is, if he gets hit, Chip, lowest health in the game, he's going to absolutely explode. The 5P to stuff out the fight. He said, get out of here. Just swipe him out. Waited to, waited to see him connected to the wall and be able to go through that. Swings through the shuriken, though. We were just talking about that. Not the greatest move in Chip's arsenal. All right, clean counter hit there. I like the patience, though. There's Gamma Blade. Double throw. Another Gamma Blade. I like the way Marvello uses Gamma Blade as a meaty tool. Yeah, 
in the corner, Gamma Blade is definitely an incredibly toxic option to be able to keep the lockdown, get those plus frames. The block up the VRC is gonna burst to try and secure the round. And the double back dash luggage. <laughs> yeah, it's smart stuff from Marvello to just wait it out. Just ran away until the blood popped. Incredible awareness. That was a pretty clean first game for Marvello there. Uh, he was pretty dominating. Young LZ was was playing incredibly well, but unfortunately, it was those the time he was just letting his blood get out of hand. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it can be tough. I mean, you have to spend a lot of blood in this matchup to keep up. If you're going to try to keep pace with Chip, it it's not cheap. So you either have to play a style that is going to be more about stopping Chip from getting himself rolling, or when you're going high tempo with him, you have to just kill him. You got you've got to kill him way faster than he kills you, man. Yeah, absolutely. And Marvello was doing a really good job at stuffing out the bites too. So Young Z didn't even get a chance to get his blood back. Yeah, I was only able to find one bite the entire match there on the six minutes. Two S anti air, but doesn't get anything afterwards. A little too far. And patience here, run up two B. And a great burst, sending Marvello into the corner here, but Marvello doing a great job at reversing the situation. He loses corner though, so now Young LZ free to roam, has an RC available. Oh, the YRC gets baited out by J2K though. I don't think that's what he wanted. I think he was trying to go for late, uh, for early VRC rather than late uh, YRC. That's really unfortunate. Yeah, against the Naruto Uzumaki Barrage through the corner. Gonna have to hold this mix up here. Goes for the overhead option straight into Alpha Blade. Reset, back into it. Marvel to find Rob. Continue to keep the momentum. No way, he's just Fukio throw. <laughs> Again, anytime you see the Fukio, Marvel is just pressing 2B. Yeah, that's definitely a thing that the community at large doesn't do well enough, is just stuffing Fukios if they're empty. So I like to see Marvello uh, set the pace on that. Oh, clean throw there from Young LZ. Young LZ only really needs one more touch to close this out, but unfortunately he's in a bad situation right now. The burst, though, to get out of that. Two kills forward once again, just to buy some real estate. The second jump that time, doesn't want to get thrown again. 5k anti-air. I think that's the first time that we've actually seen Marvello go for the overhead hit of the Wrecker there and immediately get stuck. Oh no, the blood, of course. Unlucky, yeah. I mean, once you see him FDing full screen like that, you you have to know what's coming up. Yeah, for sure. He's just holding on for dear life. Ninja. He's saying, please just come close to me so I don't die. <laughs> oh man, so that's two games in a row for Marvello. Young LZ, having a couple small adjustments here. It's been very close. I mean, a lot of it's just like mileage per hit, which is weird to say, Chip versus Nagoriyuki, that Chip is getting a, a lot more per touch, but it really is coming out. All right, we're gonna see Young LZ, like again, that, that has been kind of, unfortunately his downfall in this set has been he is popping way too much. Just going way too far with the blood, needs to pay more attention. Like, look at this, the blood's built up already to level three. Going to level three though, usually not too bad of a thing. Gets the throw. Whiff close slash, doesn't get anything afterwards. Oh, PRC into throw attempt here. Both players ready for it. Just gonna burst out of the pressure. I don't want to deal with any of it. Put straight back in the blender though. Yep, going right into this wall. Oh, great backdash though on the command throw from Young LC. Delayed it perfectly. And there's the blood pop. And now we're at set point here for Marvello. Yeah, another time where just a tiny bit of mismanagement at blood gauge. But like you said, it is difficult. You do have to spend that blood in order to keep pace with Chip. You are absolutely correct. And it is just, it's just that mismanagement. Huge plus frames to continue the aggression. Goes for the second Alpha Blade. Oh, the whip punch still on the far slash. And there's the wall break. No meter. No, goes for the mix up here. First comes out. Fun to follow up. Young LZ, gotta find something here. Maybe he was trying to bait the burst out there. Yeah, I do believe so. You know, in that kind of situation when your back is up against the wall, you gotta expect that the opponent is going to want to burst to see if you're in the corner. But Marvello closing it out there over Young LZ. 3-0.
Yeah, that can be really hard. Like we said, uh, hey, he's British. <laughs> all right, so here we go. Chip versus Axel, always a tough one. Yeah, and you're gonna see it already off the deck here, Marvella, with the early rush in. For the pull afterwards, J2K, very nice stuff. Marvello, pressure's on. Love the little FD flashes here from Stealthy. Yep, RC to keep the pressure going, but Stealthy is trying his best to survive this onslaught. And the, ooh, IAD back JH into a full confirm. Stealthy, you are nasty. They're looking for the command throw after, but there's a 6P. Pressure's back on. Another command throw, this time from Marvello. Gamma Blade can't swing. Yeah, unfortunately, gets flipped by it. Had to throw out the burst to stay alive. All right, the, uh, the overhead on the Rekka getting blocked. From Stealthy here, great defense. Again, he's that, using it like reversal back Mega Fist. Yeah, that time though he didn't get the counter hit, so he wasn't able to get the JD uh, confirm afterwards. Oh, oh, chip! That was a chip kill there. Unfortunately for Stealthy, ran out of meter. Run up throw, the Axel special. Definitely something. It's definitely the, the, the most deer in the headlight situation in this game. Said react to this. Back dash. Oh, trying to use JP there at really low range. We got six feet right, uh, right from Marbello. Oh, that little stagger was so smart. The commando lands again. No RC though. And this is just an incredibly scary situation. All right, Marbello bursting to stay in, but Stealthy using this IED JH is such incredible effect here. Uh, one of the nicest things about. It. On the second goes for the 2D. One more touch could do it, and there it is. One of the nicest things about having consistent players uh, showing up, people always coming through, the same couple people, is seeing their progression. Stealthy's onto something with this instant air dash back heavy. This is cheap as hell. I'm stealing it. 100%. <laughs> this is super cheap. He's using it. He's using it like Potemkin's used back Mega Fist. When I'm pressured at all, I am churning backwards court circles. Well, it makes a lot of sense, too, with the changes to the air Gatlings. Now that Axel has access to JHJD, it's, it seems like an incredibly powerful tool to just yeah. knock them out of the corner. Dual one. Let's rock. Back out of hit 2H right at the start. Goes for the low mix up there. That's a little delay. That's a huge punish. Stealthy. Setting the tempo here in the second game. 6H empty. And I like the way that he's catching Marvello trying to jump out with those pull-ups from Lorenzen. 6P had to be an execution error, but still works out. Very nice stuff from Stealthy. 6P do not see often from uh, from Axel. Uh, I will go on record saying definitely, certainly his worst button. Worst 6P in the game, probably. Oh, trying to use the 5K, preemptive 5K to stuff Marvello's approach. Ooh, they have huge damage, really good burst. You know, the crazy thing about this is Stealthy is just brawling with Marbello. Yeah. He's I, not really zoning. He's just duking it out. Definitely not a lot of zoning, but more fighting for sure. That's a punish there on the 6H. Didn't go for anything afterwards. Still has RC available. All right, you have to hold that mix up. Goes the overhead into the low. 2K, 2D, get off me. Has an RC available to fix a mistake there. Instead, he's going to use the cash out on damage. Bro, Stealthy said, here's the new adjustment. I'm no longer a zoner. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. I have foregone zoning. I am a fighter now. Bro, he held W on his ass. It was really, he went from Ranger to Barbarian in like a heartbeat. Bro, he's That's got sick. sickles. <laughs> Super sick. I like that. Great adjustments from Stealthy. Marvello, it's up to you now to find the answers here. What do you do when the zoner is sprinting at you? I mean, look, when <laughs> it, this matchup, it is so incredibly difficult to keep uh, Chip out because he's just so fast and so mobile. So why not just go duke it out with him? It makes perfect sense. He's finding places for 6P2. First Axel I've seen really make that button work at all. Yeah, using that IDJH. Just, just a massive hitbox right underneath you. Okay, Bob, I like the idea with the Charge 5D a lot, actually. Yeah, preemptive. Trying to catch Marvello rushing in. They form guess for sure. Okay, 2D dashes backwards. Our Marvello looked like he missed an instant air dash there. There's the empty throw! Oh my god, Stealthy with the IAD safe jump JS. Normally you see JH and you have to block it, but using the JS knowing it will whiff because of the changed hitbox now. So able to land and get the throw, and there's the fully charged dust. Marvello is forced to burst. 2H dash 
Pass backwards, 2K, a little frame trap. Stealthy is starting to lean into this too. He is playing the CQC, unbelievable. I don't know what the fix is here for Marvello. Stealthy's playing this so well, it's just, he just has all the answers. It's the counter hit 2H straight into Bomber, gonna close it out, not gonna take the chance to miss the second Bomber, goes for the easy confirm, knowing that it'll kill anyway. Stealthy, incredible play that game. Dude, he has turned up the heat. That is a... I don't know what else to say other than it's just, it's so hard as a rushdown player to uh, to adjust on the fly to like, okay, well like I would, thought I was gonna have to maul this guy and now all of a sudden like he's kind of running at me. So it's like tuning up your whole game plan, having to reprogram your whole game plan on the fly like that because of Stealthy's changeups. And I want you all to understand something about Ooh, Axel as well. This man has zero buttons that are plus on block. Zero. None. Yeah. And he is just up close brawling like this. Yeah, looking for the delayed frame traps. He's been going for uh, for 2K far heavy slash quite often, which is uh, pretty ballsy. I mean, the risk reward is unbelievable, though. He gets the counter hit. All right, the JD there from Chip getting the counter hit, not confirming that was trying to bait out the burst. That's underneath. Makes the J2K for his troubles, though. Marvello swaps. It's an obvious mix up, but he gets better positioning. Oh, a little too far, though, to get that JH. Oh, there's the Bomber, 2H to confirm with the OTG. Oh, I like that. Going for the windmill option because he knows Chip wants to rush in. Again, no cancel there on the six. He got six feet counter, he didn't get any afterwards. All right, preempted 2K. Great whip punish there for Marvello to take the round. Yeah, it's really, really good to be able to cash out there. Not, it's when you haven't been landing a ton of combos there. The, the presence of mind to still go for the optimal stuff there. Really, really smart for Marvello. Hard. Okay, gets the cross up this time, but Stealthy ready with the defense. Delay. Two H late on the Rekkas. Keep it going. The second hit lands. Great blocking though. Gets caught pressing and gets caught crouching. Sent through the wall. Marvello with a positive bonus and a healthy life lead. All right, reeled in. Goes for the low mix this time. Stealthy backdash, or sorry, Marvello backdashing out of it. Oh, and just never found an opportunity to use his burst there. Unfortunately, that's going to be two to two now. Garfield, you had burn. <laughs> <laughs> you know that picture. <laughs> oh my god. It's like the reverse of images I can hear. <laughs> like, images I can see. So two to two. I mean, that is a hard ask. I think that optimally you are down backing there with intentions of gold bursting anything that's not a low. So uh, it's, it's, it's hard to know though. It's really, really difficult for Stealthy there. So now we go into two to two. Yeah, game five here and win top eight winners. Winner of this is going to have to go up against Happy Chaos. Bro, though. Shattercoin Ooh. coming through two gifted tier one. Shattercoin, man, thank you. You're not supposed to be giving us stuff on your birthday, man. <laughs> thank what you, What a generous dude. person. Appreciate you a lot. All right, Marvello playing really patiently here now. Oh, my God, counter hit close slash. Had to burst there right as the bomber came out to gain as much damage as possible. Connecting. Ooh, able to answer the go to the command throw. Okay, drop the bomber though. That was about to be incredibly brutal. Close slash, BRC, close slash into bomber. Unfortunately, got JH. Still stuck in the corner now. <laughs> Shadow Quinn, I see you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> nice jump over. Try to go for the windmill and gets the burst out of it too. A nightmare. And goes for the other mix up there. Oh my god, he didn't want to break the wall. He said, I don't need to. One more mix and you're dead. And Marvello is sitting here on set point now. Little delays on a whiffed 2H, bro. You can't play footsies with chip like this, Marvello. Getting aggressive now. He's giving up on the footsies, man. He said time to maul. There's the throw, though. Run up throw, no fear. Huge start for Stealthy. Right, trying to fish out counter hits with these 5 B and 2 H's. Nice swing! We always say it, as a zoner, you gotta be willing to swing in those awkward situations. Oh, PRC into Bomber, OTG. I'll oh, try to OTG with the 2K, just a little too far away. 
Oh, panic! Ah, oh, the SOS tech. Oh, this time not able to escape the command throw. One more mix is gonna close this out. Oh! Oh! He's he right there! Going out the 2H at that close range. All right, delayed bomb. Oh, the 5K! All right, final All right. round, Breathe. final round. Breathe, no, I can't. Far slash, he backdashes, Marvello reads it. All right, Marvello just keeping the pressure going. There's the Gamma Blade. RC up, we're going to get a wall break. What in the world? Okay. Look, all Stealthy needs is one clean bomber combo to tie up the amount of life here. Okay. Delay Cherry Bomb, very good stuff. Peter Pressure here, JS again. Finding his mark, he answers 2K! All right, PRC for forward. Keep the pressure going. Like that jump over, very nice JS. Oh, the counter hit, is this gonna be it? He it absolutely meter. is, he has the meter and the wall break, Naruto Uzumaki Barrage. Marvello able to do it, three to two. What a way to end that, man. A hell of a back and against zoner archetypes. So Nagoriuki can afford to actually build up some blood and sit back and play that zoning game. You're already seeing playing patiently, early burst there to push MFCR into the corner. Just forcing these blocks, trying to bait something out. 6P, but there's the DP from MFCR. This man loves the flash kick. Wink up throw though. All right, I like the patience here from Brew. Poking with just a far slash and immediately going, not trying to commit to anything. Just block and throws up the YRC again, pushing MFCR into the corner. Brew's defensive options are incredibly on point and smart here. The positioning that they're putting him in is something to pay attention to. All right, again with that, that run through to get the mix up here. To age, MFCR with a healthy life lead and has burst on deck. Also with the meter lead. PRC to catch Nagoriuki's backdash. Gets the counter hit as well. Oh, the DP, the second hit of the DP beating after the clash, allowing MCR to take the first round here. All right, throwing out the clone, trying to get some pressure going here. Blood Gage is already up to level three. All right, I like it. MCR trying to jump out, 2D trade. Oh, these run-throughs, these run-throughs to use as whiff punishes. I really like how MFCR is doing that. He is utilizing run-through as a whiff punish every time Nagoriyuki whiffs 5H to try and just get in on him or get to the other side of him. Oh, tries to go for a fancy air combo, but drops it, and that's gonna give MFCR the chance he needs to put Brew into the corner here with the wall break. And that is a positive bonus already with nearly 100 meter on deck. BRC forward. Trying to mix up really hard, but a beautiful backdash from Brew. Only needs one more hit to close this out. <gasps> the parry. Oh, almost getting a whiff punish here. All right, if you're Brew, you have to be incredibly careful. 2K is going to tie up the rounds here. Both these players want to get that early momentum with the first game down. Oh, there we go, finally, with it, oh my god, and baiting the burst too. Baiting out the DP and the burst, dropping the air combo yet again though. That's the second time in a row Bru has dropped that air combo and has absolutely paid for it. Look at this, one drop combo put into the corner, forced to use your burst to escape. I like that using the fire, using clone to get in, but he there he pops. Close enough though to stay safe. Got a YRC, only needs one more touch. It, didn't believe in it though. Patience, two age, dash in, fully charged dust is going to close out this game. And that is Brew up one early over MFCR. Yeah, so Brew is going for a lot of interesting routes with Nagoriyuki. He's really trying to go for a lot of these fancy air combos, but unfortunately he's dropping them. Luckily he was able to close out the first game, but I don't know, maybe Brew should stick to the more safer high damage routes. I like the fancy air combos from Nagoriyuki, of course, 
but he has gotten blown up for every single one he's dropped so far. MFCR is capitalizing on that perfectly. Man. But other than that, he's playing an incredibly strong neutral game. Uh, not heavily committing to really anything. There's the counter hit Beyblade there. Trying to bait out the burst with the 5k. There we go. MFCR has to spend the burst. Does not want to get sent through the wall and allow Nagori Yuki to get that positive bonus. RC backwards. Create a little bit of space. YRC defensively here from Brew. Trade on the 2k, but the patience from Brew to block MFCR's 2d afterwards. Fully charged dust. MFCR says, I have one of those of my own. Brew with no meter, uh, sorry, no burst on deck. Has to hold all that. And one more mix. Blocks the overhead, but eats the 5k, 6k Berserker Slash to the face to close out that round. All right, trade. Unfortunately, not in Nagoriki's favor. Built up a lot of blood after that. Again, another trade and building up blood. No bang for his buck there. And shoutouts to GGTV Series for the raid. We appreciate you. Welcome, new viewers. We are here in our top eight here. Hope you enjoy it. Counter hit 2S with the DP to break the wall. 6H is going to close it out. And we love you too. Thank you so much. Again, welcome guys. We are in our top eight loser side now. If you're just tuning in from GGTV series, we have Brew up here against MFCR. PRC to catch with the JK. I, see, MFCR is trying to rush in a lot with these, with these two H's, but Brew, or sorry, these two D's, trying fishing for those counter hit two D's, get the knockdown to start running this mix, but Brew is absolutely ready for it. All right, blocking the overhead, YRC. I love the way that Brew is using his meter defensively in this matchup. Throw there from MFCR. Oh, the counter hit axe kick. That's gonna be devastating. Is this enough to kill? Not quite though. Stuck to the wall just a little too early. One more touch would have done it. And the double KO! So we're going to another round! <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> Both of them just 5 being each other to death here. Well, let's run that back. Redo, redo. <laughs> All right, counter hit JS there. Going to get the wall break. MCR does not get the chance to burst. And there's the throw. Oh, wake up super though, Berserker Barrage. Don't okay, that's the first thing that happens when I get back. 5D, fully charged, with the <laughs> block it. You just missed a double KO on the final round. Oh, God. And so it just restarts the round. No one wins. Couple two S's, not gonna work out. Like a little delay, trying to play it slow, it has 50 meter. Oh my God, the time for slow pass. Gets the first two, what a timing on the RC. And Brew up 2-0 now over MFCR. Clean. Damn, so Brew. Hopefully, keep it together here. Keep the momentum. MFCR, a tough customer for sure. I mean, I saw in the chat earlier people were talking about thinking that uh, this was a, a tough matchup for Leo. But I don't know. Well, Brew is playing incredibly patiently. He's yeah. doing a lot of like. One thing I really like that he's doing is his utilization of YRC. He's using it in really smart points and using his yes. meter defensively. But he's also just. He'll poke with the tip of Far Slash, and then just Fukio short either forward slightly or back. He's not committing to the full Far Slash string like you see a lot of Nagoriyuki players do. He's really just poking to see if he gets those hits so he can try and slowly move in. Dual one. Let's rock. Here we go, 2-0 over MFCR. Bru is sitting in a really good place right now. So up to a good amount of blood gauge early on. Fukio's forward, but gets DP for it. Wow, this is where it gets tough. Blood, blood gate gets higher. Now management is so important as MFCR. A little more resources to be able to fight out here. Yeah, but you see Brew is now playing that zoning game, which is what Leo struggles against, but using the run through to get in. Going for the dribbles, ends in back turn. Finally, nice. finally goes for the overhead. MFCR has been going for the low or just the standing S every single time. Oh, 5 him out of the 2-H startup. 
Okay, pixel left. Oh no, and him standing up at pixel left. You know what, this could happen. He just needs one hit though, but gets caught trying to backdash. Yeah, after RCing forward, since the slowdown connected, knew the 2K was gonna hit on the guaranteed punish. I like the Fukio back too, to try and bait out the first. First safe route, so important. Let's go, but he wakes up with the DP. He's gonna burst the DP, actually. There's the tick throw, MFCR. We get started. What an unstance to 2H, extra damage on that. And putting him into the blender, there's the overhead. One more mix should do it, right? See, the YRCs are so on point here for Brew. For great trade in Nagoruchi's favor. You have to be wary, though, of DP. Oh, the wait, pop. wait, wait, wait. Oh! 2H. Oh okay, I was God. looking at the one. Oh, oh, the super. super straight away. Yeah, if he had super there, he was gone. He put him through the wall. All right, MFCR putting a point on the board here. He still, if, if MSCR is going to take this, he's going to have to reverse 3-0, and that is going to be very difficult unless he gets the download yeah. on Brew. MFCR showed off my favorite thing there, which is playing a character that has stances, how you know you have uh, obtained a certain level of mastery of it is when a player who is watching can't tell that the character is going in between stances, right? It's that fluid, which is just exactly what MFCR is kind of showing off when he gets into those situations. <laughs> Goes for the 6H afterwards. Oh, I like the little attempted at footsies, but 2K a little too quick. Oh, the whip throw though, so unfortunate. Has to spend his burst. And there we go. Now MCR starting to feel comfortable throwing out these DPs with no abandon. Oh my god, and he's parrying from max distance. OTG with the super. All right, he's gonna, no, goes for the same side. It's such a scary situation whenever you get the hard knockdown through the wall against Leo, you have to guess left, right. DRC trying to get through the fireball, but landing on top of it, unfortunately, there. Yeah. Whip punish. Good string there, everything there. We're gaining a little bit of both left. Looking for the whip punish with 2D. All right, look at this footsies game here going on now. Oh, wake up backdash, no punish there from MFCR. Careful swinging from that distance against the blood gauge this high. Yeah, any button that MFCR puts out, he has to think is one five H can just melt him. He can cancel. YRC, YRC straight into 2K. That has kind of been Bruce's go-to thing now, but MFCR able to close out this round. He can tie it up with one more. Ooh, the clone, very risky. The DP comes through. Early burst there from Brew. Not going to be able to build it back before this match is over. Wow, getting close to the wall here. Are we going to see MFCR go to the left side now? Oh. God, trying to go for the career ender there. Not quite. Not going to be able to land it, though. We go forward from Brew. We made it to the corner, but he reversals straight out. Parry. 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 Easy parry. Yep, there it is. No meter, though, to super him back, but he doesn't need it. That finally builds up. And we have a tied-up game. M MFCR threatening a reverse 3-0 now. One of the hardest things to get used to against Leo is that reversal supers are very strong against a lot of characters in this game, but back turn Leo could not get... It's what he wants. He wants you to wake up with the super there. That's his his wet dream. If he sees you stand up and there's no super, he goes into mix up. If there's a super, he is just he's karate chopping the D on his on his stick. <laughs> Literally just mash. Trying to get the parry out, dude. You gotta know that that's coming for sure. But all right. Looks like these players are gonna go straight back into the next one. Oh, BK Bam out here with the download complete. Yeah, hit him with the download complete, huh? That's crazy. Huh? I bet you. I hope you have your bits on MFCR then. <laughs> All right, let's see it. Final round, a little color swap here from Brew. Everything worked out. Very nice. Oh, he's, he's entered his final form now with the color swap. Max distance. Couldn't be farther, but there's the 6 8, and it leads to a cross up. Wakes up with a throw. Very back and forth. Good pressure here. All right, forcing MCR to burst to escape the corner. 
YRC turn this around. Nice counter hit series. Block. Oh, immortal counter. Axe kick with the crumple. Goes for the run through this time and the overhead. Has the meter to close it out, but doesn't. Gets the run up throw, though. And MFCR sitting on set point now. He might just do six rounds straight. Bounce our DP, choosing not to go for the follow up. That's going to build up a lot of blood, too. Blocks there, gets the run through. Not able to really stop the run through so far in these last three games. MCR is turning it up, and this is going to be a wall break. Bruce is not going to get the chance to burst. If you're MFCR, you have to be trying to sniff out that burst on your next confirm. Oh, I love that walk of Beyblade. But gains so much blood off it. And there it the is. Burst, but he doesn't punish. Oh, no. So tragic with the reverse 3 0 MFCR. And top eight losers moving on and sending Brew home. Dude, wow. Fam, thank you so much. Holy shit, dude. 20 in a row. That's uh, that's quite a fucking lot, man. Appreciate you. Water 1 is rocking Chip. And Osmosis is rocking Zato here. So yeah. Osmosis was Zato. That's where I was yeah. going there. The Osmosis Zato, the expected pick for sure. That's right, because I keep calling him Osmosis Jones. I just want to say one more time, dude. A huge shout out to Bam, dude. Holy shit. Thank you. All right, Water, yeah, Water is a Zato main, so him playing Chip in this matchup is really interesting. I guess he likes it more than the Mirror match. That's what I was gonna say, because the hype of one, bro, it seems easy. That's, I mean, it's working out pretty well. I'm liking the Chip so far. He could have fooled me that this wasn't his main character. I mean, Chip is pretty good against Zato. You know, Zato has a hard time dealing with some rushdown against, uh, against characters. It didn't work out, like the little 2P. Chat saying that he's just sick of the Mirror match. I respect that. It's not a fun mirror, so I, I, can, I can definitely do that. All right, 2K to kill little Eddie. But Water does have a... Water knows how to fight Zato, though. If he's played the mirror match so much that he's sick of it, so this is going to work out into his favor. Man, either way, we appreciate you a lot, man. Thank you very, very much for any amount that you do at all, dude. Whether it's the players, whether it's us, whether it's anything, man. Uh, anything back into the community is pretty overwhelmingly sick, so yeah, that's just very cool, dude, man. Thank you. 2 OD. All right, Water's putting in work here. Osmosis able to fight back, though. Oh, okay. Looking for the 2P. Very nice. Like the backdash into the 6P. Oh, the confirm into the 5H there, though. Push uh, push Water into the corner here. For the low crush there. FD jumped out, just blocked him back to the corner. It forces the burst out of Pierce. Stops him on the run-up. Holding down back, there's the sword. Get little Eddie back. Oh my god. Did he god, just oppose last second? Bro. Wait for the second command throw. Goldberg comes through. The final sand here for water. Keeping him in the middle. Wants to keep the mix going, but there's a great confirm from Osmosis closing out game one with a 2H. I mean, first round looked a lot better there, but Osmosis got kind of got his grips, kind of got himself grounded there. Was able to spend the sword to get a better mix-up. Yeah, the, the thing was, he was really able to slow down the match to his pace. Again, this is another match of you have to you have to control the pace of it. Chip always wants to be playing at like breakneck speed. Most Chip players will play like that. And Zato wants to slow things down, get you blocking, get little Eddie moving in. Water's a. Uh... Our osmosis thing is see me on Xbox. <laughs> Game, Game, Game two. Overture? Look at the 2P, did not work out. Nice little just block to send it back to the same side. And oh, Drunker to send it past on the Pierce. And there's the scoop up. I love the way osmosis is using command grab here. Very okay, nice jump in. Ooh, JK. Yeah, rising JK. Unfortunately, not able to confirm. Yeah, off the oppose. First, straight back in response. All the resources off the table here. Water very close to an RC, though. Yeah, Water doing a really good job at stuffing little Eddie and maneuvering crew in by health. There's a clean counter hit. That is exactly what Water needed. Goes for the wow. mix-up. What a block! Is able to stop him low. Oh, the whip throw, though, but the 6P. Still okay. Dashes up. Try to go for the throw a second time. It wins. Drunker comes through. YRC command grab. That's going to close up the round. 
Yeah, right. Water's kind of OD with Chip. Though. Water's Chip is looking very good here again. Could have fooled me that this is not the character she's been playing the whole time. The hyphen one is the only thing that gave it away. <laughs> Come on, the anti air makes the burst. Oh, and catches Osmosis not blocking. Run out, try not to break the wall just yet, and there we go, closes it out. And so evening it up one to one. It is kind of weird that it's Osmosis versus water, kind of funny. <laughs> no science. What a coincidence. Damn. I'm stupid, I don't know, so. <laughs> he was like, ah, oh, yes, I see. Uh, I understand <laughs> completely, it doesn't get it at all. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> See if we can keep God, it God bless Signer, though, for explaining to, all, to us science yeah. illiterate people. I was going to say, science nerd, right? <laughs> Respect it. Cross on Osmosis. Can you keep it rolling here? Try to go for Drunker to cross up. It does not work out. He loses Eddie for it, but that's okay. His block string lasts long enough to get him to resummon. Patience here from Water, waiting for little Eddie to be gone before he rushes in. A gold burst the Alpha Blade, though. K2D into the sword. OTG sword as well, and immediately scooping. Just 5H meaty. Look at this pressure. Oh my god. Destruction. And he kills a 4G. Nice. And I suppose this is use of flight, too. Oh my god. 2H baits out the burst, but isn't able to get the punish, though. Yeah, it was a little too far away. 6P able to stop the flight there. All right, throwing out Pierce immediately. Drunker Shade. Invite Hell covered everything so well. Little Eddie is gone. This is Water's chance to establish some pressure. Yeah, even having Eddie being stuck in the corner like this, not very helpful. He just needs to find real estate is the most important thing. You gotta get moving. All right, the 2P stagger to get out. Oh, Maximum Spider! Did he do that reaction? I don't, I don't know. I think he just threw it out. It's very hard to punish. Oh, okay. All right, the Beta Blade after the YRC, solid option. Jump out of the command grab attempt though, goes in for the drills. Dude, the blocking! Bro, he, oh my God, scoops him up too when he's trying to throw out the DP. But a wake up throw of his uh, own. He saw him dash up and did not respect the pressure. I like that. I mean, throw is such an incredibly strong option in this game. Uh, if you don't believe in your opponent's pressure, it's definitely one of the premier options to go for. Fun, yes. No more little Eddie. Baits out the DP. Little Eddie is going to be back now to get this wall break with Amorphous. The clap. Pixel left. Straight into Frog. Trying to keep him locked down there. Yeah, and with yep. the drills into the 5D, a perfect to end out the game. Osmosis makes it two to one. This has been a barn burner so far of a match. Yeah, seriously. I mean, that tends to be how Zato games go. I mean, Zato is a character that with no uh, with no momentum and at like even footing is like pretty strong, but not like overwhelming. But the second he gets rolling, I mean, he makes you block one hit pierce and your life is forfeit. Yeah, like, and the second he's in the hands of an incredibly capable player, we just saw Peppery Splash win Arc Revo one. Canada this weekend with Zato. Okay, very nice. Oh, 6K. All right, going for the wall break here. All right, that's up. Look for the 2P, did not work out. There's the drill. Still looking pretty decent here on the far slash. Looking for the oppose after the throw. One thing I really appreciate about Osmosis is instead of going for a bunch of 5D mix-ups that you see Zatos do a lot, he's really leaning into strike and throw really heavy. Especially knowing that Chip is a DP character. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Zato Command throw, I think, do think is a little under your... Whoa! Footsies. Footsies. <laughs> Oh, 6 feet again, a little too far. He's able to get the burst out of him there. That was going to be a high damage combo. Yeah, just trying to zone him out here. I'm throwing out a pose and getting the pick him off a bit. A little too far for the 2H, though. Like those two delayed 2 feet to make sure the oppose is going to work out. He RC's forward, doesn't get a combo, though. Oh, the little 2P to kill Eddie. 
Ooh, 2P, 2P Frog. I love the disrespectful summon there. It looks like Osmosis might be able to close this here on one more touch. Trying to go for the air throw, but gets the gold burst. And Osmosis catching water with the far slash. I'll bite it out of crime, dude. A little too far away. Oh, what a tough way to end it, but that is going to be Osmosis. Three to one. A great showing from water. Look at the same, but he's in Jordan. All right, let's see it. Dual one. Brown start is one of the toughest portions of this matchup there, but MFCR is going to backdash, and Yurikov is going to get his face. Oh, they're wearing the same thing, too. How embarrassing. One of them's got to change. Nice. Oh, 5P, of course. Leo can just dash underneath that, too, at that range. Ooh, the 6P there working. Ooh, that was the, what a wake up that throw. Was the first run through. It's a little too far, though, on the whiff. It's going to go for the burst. You see Yurikov with a massive life lead here, just absolutely controlling this game so far. Counter hit 2H just to close out that first round. Round start, 2K counter hit. A little too far away, though. Yeah, it looks like Yurikov was trying to go for a 2P at round start. Nice stuff off the counter hit, gets a full confirm. Should be able to break the wall and absolutely does. No, a little too late. And Yurikov with the clean confirm to push MFCR all the way back and tie up health. Low profile, the jump H. <laughs> Axel baby 2K. What a god button. 2K, my beloved. Oh, tried to go for the, the farthest run up. It was a little too far, though. All right, blocking the mix up here. Not able to block the run through, though. Grabbing the dash through after the 5K. All right, your call is a little insane though, with these reactions. What a wire C. That didn't work out, but that was a genius play from MFCR. I love that YRC so much. He recognizes that he's going to have to block. YRC is an incredible option to get your feet back on the ground and have a chance to fight. Yeah, because that 2S blocking the air would have pushed him back and he had to start all over. Yes. So it made sense to YRC, so you land directly in front of them. And at least you have a chance to contest. All right, so back into it with Yurikov. Yurikov, Yurikov's Axel looked like a counter pick last time we saw it, and he is uh, looking more like an Axel player. This very week. looking yes. more like an Axel player. This Much week. more improved. Let's rock. That backdash, 2P, a little bit of damage. Oh, MSCR, he's really aware of that trick, though. You cannot go for the the uh, the, the autopilot block strings are not going to work. Yeah, but he's able to clip him with the Lariato. And counter hit 2H, that is a bread and butter in this matchup. PRC forward. MSCR missed time to jump. Reeling him in, trying to get OTG Rainwater, but not working out. Closing out the round there with a counter hit JH. A perfect seven golden letters. Yurikov would try and keep up the tempo. I try to go for the Remy, the fully charged dust round start. Oh my god. That's how you know you're feeling yourself. That's like a disrespect. Whoa, the run up 2K2D. Of course, I catch the back dash. But reels him in last second. The last couple frames of the reel are able to connect from that distance. He can't burst out of that combo. I love the two H's, PRC. Keep yourself safe. Yeah, I recognize it was going to whip, though. Was able to space himself out a little bit. Nice tech. The gold burst is way too early. All right, trade. You're all still in the corner here. That's a massive counter hit. Oh, oh that's going to be a parry into parry. super. No, doesn't go into super, though. Still going to be okay, I think. Not enough to kill, actually. Oh, oh. there's the throw. Yeah, Yurikov has been on point with every single run through. I don't think a single run through has hit Yurikov yet. He's going to kill him, though. That's okay. I, very dangerous situation. MFCR still manages to come out on top. All right, counter hit far slash. Going to push MFCR all the way across the screen. Yurikov's running forward, no fear. Oh, is able to get the throw, a little delay from MCR, does not work out, the 5D tap. There's the Bomber, 2H into a clothesline from hell. He has been doing 2H Rensen all set yes. so far. And finally just throws out the clothesline from hell. Perfect timing, catches him as he wakes up. And no, there is no Anji in top eight tonight.
which is definitely weird. Uh, we have had, we normally have one to two Anjis make it. We have like Wafe and a couple other players that are very strong Anji players normally, but not this week. Yeah, no, Wafe, I don't think Wafe made it out this week. But yes, we always have very strong Anji players. But right now, we're watching how strong Yurikov's Axel is. Watching a strong Axel play, I was about to say, dude. Normally, I'm very much like, hey, man, pick your stuff. Like, you got to go back to the milia if things aren't going wrong. Duel this one. Axel is looking so, like, dummy practiced in this matchup. I have 2 0 over MCR. And I wasn't just saying it to blow him up. MFCR has a very good record against most Axels. He is uh, incredible at this matchup, for sure. Oh, using the double jump to get out of the throw range. And again, just zoning out, tried to reel him in, but using that JS. MFCR with the fancy combo drops it at the very end there, though. Gets punished thanks to the BRC. It's a hair too far away. Two eight doesn't work out. There's the counter hit. Has burst. Shouldn't use it. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, oh God, Pog. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? <laughs> Final round potentially here for Yurikov. He does fully charge dust round start again. He wants it. He's feeling it so bad. There's the patience too. Fighting out with far slash a clean counter hit too. And I like that after doing that full run-up throw, Yurikov is starting to run up, stall into 2K to try and catch MSCR backdash again. Then going for the run-up low more often is going to uh, eventually set up better for the command throw just like that. The oh, burst comes no! out. He had to burst, and it's so unfortunate. Put him in a body bag. Send him to Zawardo. It's over. Dude. <laughs> Dual one. We're striving. We're gaming out here. It's gonna be British Hazama facing off here <laughs> against Osmosis. Against <laughs> I love these names. Bro, people, I, I'm so disappointed at how boring mine is when I see how sick everybody is. Mine's literally just King Jobber. Yeah, I know, exactly. Mine's also King Jobber. How'd you get that? Whoa. <laughs> Looking for the Renson, trying to go for the pull in. Finds a throw off of it, actually. That's the classic Axel mix there. You go for Renson, pull in, and then throw. Oh, he's trying to go for the shimmy. He's not going to work out. Oh, he's going to catch a huge Eddie punish to the face for it. Yep, throw out that sword. Get little Eddie back. Put him on the other side. Right into the Zato sandwich. Good amount of damage on the command throw. Puts him a little too far away. Goes for the frog to stop the jump out. And there's the wall break with the 2 age closing out that round. Very surprised to see Stealthy hold on to burst. I think you want to fight for that round, but he, I mean, Stealthy knows best. He's top eight for a reason here. All right, I like the JS harassment. That is something we see a lot in this matchup. 2K, definitely the best button in Axel's toolkit for breaking Eddie. I mean, 2P can be useful too, but 2K, that's the one. All right, defensive patience here, blocking the overhead. Ooh, went for some incredibly tricky stuff. And then trying to reel him in too. Really low air throw. That is a Guilty Gear veteran air throw. Why? A little delay. Doesn't work out, but still. Backdash 2K2D. Very nice from Stealthy to even it up. Still has burst. Oh my god. He was ready for all of that. Stealthy. Chill out, bro. Rents in there is kind of insane. <laughs> that is not what you normally yeah, see. Round start, far slash Rensen. For the delay with the 5k did not work out. Renson able to pick it up though. The empty low. Oh, the little micro step bro. Oh my god, don't play with me. Stealthy has been playing this character since the game dropped and he has not switched. He is stuck with Axel the entire time and you are seeing that. This is almost a year of Axel play. Bro, Just the micro, that's a YouTube clickbait title. <laughs> so this is what one year of Axel looks like. <laughs> Damn, dude, what a way to go from Stealthy. Continuing on, one to zero. A pretty clean one to zero, too. That micro pretty step, dominant. second slash, was unbelievable. I don't think I've seen that before. They always, they, these guys stay showing me new stuff every single week. Round start JS. Stealthy is experimenting here with these round start situations. Or sorry, JH at round start. Oh, same side, Stealthy. <laughs> 
All right, Osmosis putting the pressure on now, has 100 bar. He's going to have to hold a lot of this mix up here, too. Going for the double low, invite Helen to PRC. He tries to go for the unfly, does not work out. Stealthy weathers the storm, and he picks it up. Stealthy just blocked through 100 meter of Zato mix up and hit him with a counter hit into a full combo. I have no words to be honest yeah, for it. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Honestly, go next. That's definitely a go next. Next round, here we go, Osmosis. Pass go, do not collect 200. Yeah, try to try to get yourself back on a kill here. Pierce gets interrupted straight away, a little too far away. All right, just harassing. Throwing out Snail, too, to try and kill little Eddie. I like that, throwing out Snail in preemptive to probably Frog, because the arc it goes in will kill Frog. Very true. Great defense here. I kind of want to see Osmosis try to lean a little bit more into maybe those command throws because this, this mix-up game is just not opening up stealthy. He's just not able to maintain a steady amount of Eddie at any point here because of the 2Ks. Just like that, instant bravery is willing to swing. 60's whiffs, though, allows stealthy to escape from the corner. But this block string is going to push him right into the other one. What we've seen, Selfie has had no problem blocking all this Zato pressure here. A little too far to punish, but still gets him on the second 2H. And that is Stealthy up 2-0 here over Osmosis in our top eight loser side. Osmosis has one life left to live. And we have to bring it up again, dude. In this, he is the first Axel I've seen do wake up instant air dash back JH, and it is money so far. He is just clubbing everyone with it. And it's doing so much damage when he gets the counter hit and is able to confirm into JD Bomber. Like, my god. Yeah, he gets JD Bomber and then gets to hold the dash macro for two seconds. That's like, it's, the real estate afterwards is even better than the damage. Tried to run up. <laughs> run up charge dust. Uh -huh. able to stop that. The double overhead is able to connect. 5P, very nice. All right, yep, run forward, IED back, JS, the Axel Classic here. Look at the oh, just the bro. swag no walk forward, bro. No way, you're just walking at him. The Super Dash comes out, though. Osmosis back in control. He blocks everything. He and blocks there's the back everything. throw. Bro, Stealthy, what are you doing right now? OK, clean burst there from Osmosis. He knows when the burst Oh, Ooh, nice cancel. That was kind of clean, nice going game. for the forbidden air dash, but knowing that Selfie was going to be ready for the punish, so back dashing in the air afterwards. Oh my god, and Snipes him out with the five piece. Stealthy. Stealthy looking kind of nice right now. He just needs defense. Osmosis needs to do something to open him up. Hit him. You have to start going command throw. You can't hit him. Like in the least troll way possible, it's just, it's very clear that the mix-up game is not working out. We need to go to another layer. We got to start mixing in more throw. Like right here, Perfect tries to go for it. Stealthy was immediately ready. But that's okay. We still got him out. Able to get aggressive again. There we go. He's able to find the hit. And there, opening up, going for the throw that one time, got him to jump there and that earned that low. The throw, even if it doesn't work, it's opening up better options for No, you. not with the instant overhead BRC wall break. One more opportunity for Osmosis. And he gets broken straight away, dude. How is Stealthy? I think that Stealthy was out on the arcade shooters. That man's happy chaos. Everyone is level 1500. <laughs> this character just came out like a month ago. Let's start here. Press him to the corner. It's already gonna break the wall. Barbello's life bar not looking very good. No, Chip cannot afford to eat some of these gunshots. The man is not bulletproof. Mm. Nice back dash. Just the way that Krieg is moving around in neutral. Finally, Marvel able to get him at the first, already into steady aim. Curse. Stopping him out of take aim was really, really good. Trey not in your favor, Sinji, so far away, but he's able to dash up, no fear. And Marvello is managing to do what we've seen so many people try and fail so far, which is just run at him. Yeah, Marvello truly is Daredevil, the man with no fear here. RH wins out footsies. First round. First round we've seen anybody take on Krieg in a while, to be honest. Yeah, no, he's been playing so incredibly clean all night. There's the guard break. He goes for the low. That's a black beat combo. And he still has the clone in front, too. So what can Marvello do? 
Yeah, he definitely can't DP here. Continuing to pressure and gets the throw. OTG's him, resets himself now. Just looking for the wall stand. There we go, reload, and just gonna kill him. Doesn't even need the reset. Just rat-a-tat-tat. Oh, man. Oh my god, no. the immediate air throw, Marvello. Oh. Having him not cursed and no focus, so it takes a little too long for him to be able to get set up in that situation. And there's another whiff on the 6P. All right, Marvello finally getting some offense here, pushing into the corner with the super. This is great. It means he's going to get a hard knockdown, push slightly towards the other corner. He's able to get a mix up here and pressure. Forward. OTG's him with the gun. What can't it do? Bro, that 2S is so clean, too. And that's it, he's gonna close it out. No, he needs one more shot. Marvello wakes up with a button. I think he tried to wake up a super and missed his input because wake up heavy def definitely was not what he wanted. No. I think that was wake up super. Absolutely not, but there we go. Creed closing out the first game. And yes, that is, that is something that you will see very often from Happy Chaos. It looks like it shouldn't work, but PRC backwards after throw. Uh, steady aim does OTG into a full combo. Yes. It is disgusting. Absolutely disgusting, but it does work. Dual one. Alright, so Kree taking the first one. Goes for the clone straight away and stays with it. Shoots him very high, and that's dangerous. Look Take, at this confirm. Taking damage that high in the air from Happy Chaos is the worst possible situation. He will reload and shoot you six more times. Three bullets. And he's gonna throw up the Deus Ex Machina here to get the wall break. Okay, very nice. And just chips him out. All right, 2K round start to get his gun out, but has to put it away, though. <laughs> Look at these, this footsies game that these guys are playing. Whipping these buttons in such close range. Way worse here. He's able to get chipped out. Goes for the burst. Bursting. Bittersweet sends him full screen. A missed time to stuff, though. Doesn't get the shot. Yeah, and he absolutely has no focus. Finally, it's back, though. Goes for super focus. That's a confirm. That move is so plus. It's basically an RC. It was four bullets clone. Was expecting a reversal, it looked like. I mean, it is a smart thing to think about. Marvello is sitting on a lot of meter right now. Gets clipped with the overhead, but drops the combo. That's so unfortunate. It could be critical. Oh, tries again. Oh, my God. He says, if, it, uh, if, if overhead's so good. Yeah, I'll just do it again. Yeah, nice whiff punish, Marvello. Evening rounds up now. Krieg, we saw this last time though. Krieg was able to close it out. Uh, Try fishing out there with the 2D. Not working though. Good okay, way to go. Look at the damage on this guy. His focus has bullets. Look at the, you just see the reticle chasing him in the sky. 6P, give him the headbutt. Not able to confirm after the Gamma Blade, though. RC. Oh, YRC to push off in the air. That's incredibly smart. What is He's happening? Dead. He's dead. He's absolutely dead. You got to chip him out here. Tries to run up for the trade and just gets capped for it. Oh, my God, dude. Krieg making a second one. Dude. I mean, one thing to remember is when you get pushed to the corner, uh, depending on the knockdown, uh, an important thing to remember of versus Happy Chaos is what they get based on how many bullets they've reloaded. Because you have to think about the bullet reload as just a frame kill. Yeah, the so. thing about Happy Chaos is while he can be completely disgusting, he's not an easy character to play. Yeah. Going four bullets into a clone, uh, you're giving up your meaty situation. You can't meaty them from there. It ha you're just you're relying on them doing something. He just, it, it's really important to be informed on those kinds of situations. And look three at bullets. He used three bullets to push him to the edge there. Yep, so three bullets, almost always immediate, depending on the situation. That is the wall broken. He does not break the wall, actually. No, he was trying to go for the Deus Ex Machina there, but unfortunately dropped, the, dropped his motion. Ooh. Yeah, that's going to be a clean hit. This is exactly what Marbella needs, but Krieg is probably going to wire C. Oh, no invincibility. Swing, swing, swing. Yeah, oh, had to PRC. PRC. RC up, still has burst. Trying to bait the burst. Uh, what a combo variation. Oh no. Oh my god, I'm surprised Creed ran up for that. The double clone doesn't work out. He bursts. And there's the gunshot. Oh my god. Bang. <laughs> Bang. Dude, what a run. Oh 
my god! Alright, US. I can't believe all he had to do was run and let the reticle finally target him. That's so toxic. Alright, there's the command grab. Marvello finally starting to turn things up a bit here. Gets the overhead. Sticks him to the wall. Goes for the sliding knockdown. Ended up going the same side overhead. Catches him low. Break the wall here. Absolutely, he's gone. All right, Marvello finally with a point up on the board. Yeah, looking way better there. Getting a, a lot more aggressive in the end. Dude, Krieg might be feeling a little bit of fatigue from the last round there. Game, game three, round one was... Uh, about as chaotic as it gets. Happy Chaos game. does take, uh, no pun intended, a lot of focus. Yeah, it really, <laughs> really play. does. Uh, but that's one thing that I've been talking to a bunch of Happy Chaos players about, is it seems that managing the resources is not that hard. Once you get to the point where you start to feel the flow of it, it just starts to become, uh, you, you always structure yourself in a way to where you're never threatening yourself to run out of resources. So that part gets a lot easier. But damn, utilizing all the tools while you're getting mauled by Chip like this? Yeah, it's not easy by any means. And we're starting to see, this is a complete turnaround from our last few games now. Marvello with the perfect. He said, I paid $60 for this game, I'm gonna fight. <laughs> I'm not blocking anymore. You're right, he's not blocking. <laughs> Knocked down, continuing to shoot the gun here, going for the reloads. All right, Krieg finally exactly where he wants to be. Marvello's so close. And there it is, the counter hit that he needs. He's finally in to strangle this man. Okay. He dashed back into the corner. What was that JS from Krieg there? It worked so well. And Krieg has so much meter, but he's not going to get the chance to spend it. Oh, and that just barely hit him in his big toe. And we're tied up 2-2, two -two, just like that. Wow, Marvello in a hurry just made this even up. As you said, dude, Krieg has been looking like the person to stop all night. Has been, I think it only dropped one game until the set with Marvello. No, I believe so. Yeah, no, he's been on fire. But now facing off against Marvello, two to two. Can he keep the momentum or is Krieg going to move on into the grand finals here? And, and Krieg is playing so incredibly well for what I imagine is not an easy matchup for Happy Chaos. I'm assuming this is definitely slightly chip favorite. Just because the, it seems like the best button in this matchup for chip is the dash macro. He gets so much real estate in between each shot. They don't call him the Godspeed Ninja for nothing, right? He's so fast, fastest character in the game. Like that, he just gets so much more reward for his dash blocking here. I like the focus super, keeps up your pressure. And look at that amount of chip damage. Look at Marvello's health. He's gotten hit like twice. There's the third hit. That might be all it takes here. No. Dropped his loop. He has no focus and only one bullet left. 5k. What an answer. But to all swing he needed. Out. He only needed that one bullet. Oh my god. He said, make my day, punk. Are you feeling lucky, Punk? Oh no, I'm a fraud. Dude, able to break the wall. Okay, back to the positive bonus here. Marvello has to continue. Try to dash up. Little bit of a whip, but that's okay. Just bang, bang, bang. All these gunshots, man. JGK, Alpha Blade, really late. I think he kills him. No, no, he drops the combo. It. Oh, the YRC, but he blocks it. Isn't able to get the punish, though. And the just block. Gold burst, though, for Marvello. This is. Okay, up. Uh, a delay, has another RC, RC's up again. Look at the wrist gauge, 5K! 5K mortal counter thanks to the wrist gauge, and we are in final game, final round here oh in our winner's God. finals. Round start, dashing up. Krieg, the last second change up, has decided to be the aggressor this round, and it is working out so well. He saved it all for this final situation. There's the fast dust, he gets the wall break. Reloads no. and focuses. I like that. Just keep the wall. Put himself up for mix up here. Wakes up with the DP, but he 5 keys him. He gives him the tippy tap toe into the Deus Ex Machina, and that is going to be it. Oh, Kareem is headed into grand finals. Marvello is going to have to fight his way back through the losers for a run back. Damn, bro. Kareem. It's kind of nasty. To play zoning that whole time, stick to the gig. The games are getting out of your.
stealthy. <laughs> British Hazel was so toxic. <laughs> All right, let's see it. Dash up, gets a throw. Yurikov starting early. And this is a matchup, though, where the IAD JH is not going to work out so well because Miralia is so airborne with a lot of her mix-ups. Okay, able to find the JS. Stealthy, a little too close to the sun there. Dash underneath him. All right, able to block the TK Bad Moon. Had to RC, though, to keep the pressure going. Stealthy able to fight his way out. Stealthy is trying really hard to get these JHs, but they're just not working out. And there's the counter hit JH from Yurikov. Gonna close out this round. Oh, 2S just barely whips. And there's another counter hit JH. That's exactly what Yurikov wants. He wants to get in that position right above Stealthy and fall on top of him with the JH. Ooh. Okay. Again, see, we're, it's, it's like, that's the main goal of Milia in this matchup. It's such a powerful position to be at. Okay, well, the attempt of the dash over. Yeah, you get to buy so much space off of that, that is not safe. Another throw, very nice. Yurikov continuing to abuse the matchup there. Stealthy. Not a lot to be done. I mean, Yurikov is just picking the right spots. Uh, Yurikov is a Milia that excels even uh, the thing that Yurikov excels the most at as Milia is the thing that makes this matchup so hard for Axel, which is, damn, Yurikov is so slippery in the air. <laughs> he's schmoovin'. He's in the perfect spot at all times. He just always knows where to be at the right time. Yeah, for sure. And that, like you said, it's absolutely key in this matchup against Axel. Axel is incredibly committal with so many of his buttons, especially his anti-air buttons. So he messes up once, and especially with the recent changes in the last patch to the way that counter-hit anti-airs work, he just explodes. Okay, very nice. Maybe look at the burst out of him. Oh, trying to go for the JD there. That would've been crazy if it counter-hit. Yeah, definitely big dreams on that one. JP, maybe JS. A little delay, here comes the heavy disc. Good block, but the throw comes through. Yep, Yurikov is start going to put in that next layer of mix-up, which is the landing into the throws, that strike throw game with Melia. All right, Axel Bomber with the burst right afterwards. Saves you from having to eat the OTG into Renson pressure, and Yurikov taking this round. Nice. All right, that was a clean place, 2S there from Stealthy. Oh, the counter hit in the coin here. Have to hold this mix up, goes low. And the wall break with the fully charged dust. Okay, dashed over, can get the combo though. BRC, not too much else again. Looking for the 2S, way too high in the air. All oh, the baited burst, and Yurikov is gonna close out this game also. 2-0 now over Stealthy. The, like, and we saw how good Stealthy has been playing tonight, so the fact that Stealthy looks so lost so far in this matchup, it just shows how strong of a player Yurikov is and how he's able to really take the strengths of Melia in this matchup and apply them to Axel's weaknesses. I want to say about the, what you guys are talking about in the chat too. Yeah, the South America thing is absolute bullshit and needs to be fixed faster, and it's unbelievably unacceptable. So uh, that is 100% uh, agreed. If you have a different opinion than that, is incorrect and you're wrong. Uh, they need to fix it for them. It's it's, uh, it's so stupid. Yeah, you, you paid money, you should be able to play the game. 2-0, Yurikov continuing, dude. What a cash out of damage at the beginning of that. Oh, that's... Not looking like he's gonna stop up for a second. Yeah, having to force the burst there out of Yurikov, I mean, out of Stealthy. Oh, again? Oh my god. And the run up throw. Damn, bro. Uh, I've never seen just a car only. <laughs> only hair car. <laughs> just hair car right in the ankle. Oh Cut him God, down. Dude, he hit him with the happy chaos. He just makes the car appear. <laughs> and Yurikov's sitting on set point now. Oh, clean air throw there from Stealthy. Trying to fight back, stay alive. Yeah, look for the dash up, heavy slash after that. Not going to work out. All right, the double jump. Oh, trying to fall with the JH. Not working out that time. But of course, Stealthy gets, gets thrown in the recovery frame of his 2S. 
Jason came out, missed his actual combo afterwards, though. Still finds the throw. Stealthy has burst, has YRC, gets the throw. Goes for the instant overhead. JH again trying to go for a second one. PRC. All right, burst. Keep Yurikov into the corner. And the whiff throw is going to spell doom for Stealthy here. Yurikov move back into the losers' finals. Yurikov up here against Marvella. We've seen this matchup many a time at TNS. The two speed demons up against each other. Okay. Stop. Continuing on with the pressure here. Looking for the records. Does not work out. Nice 6P. All right. Yeah, Yurikov really loves to play this air game. This is going to be interesting because we know Yurikov is a very airborne Melia and Marvello is a very grounded chip. So it's going to be interesting to see, of course, how these two go up against each other. And of course, Yurikov already in the early lead with round one. I think it's definitely one of those things where the early advantage would go to the aerial opponent because the grounded player has to do a lot more positioning, like micro positioning decisions to win out there. So expect it definitely for Yurikov to get the first round. It's going to even out quickly though, as we see Marvello already capitalizing so heavily and just not for a second letting him up. Here comes the mix up. Oh, not able to connect with the 5K though. That's allowing Yurikov to fight out. Here's the mix up. Goes for the empty throw. 2K passes forward. Air car has meter, chooses not to spend any of it though. Looks for the disc, too far away. Bait out the burst. burst, but it was a gold burst, so not able to get a proper punish. Gonna throw out the super to get the plus frames. Yeah, very plus off of that. Only goes for one overhead. Oh, Marvello catches out. And Yurikov having the burst back now for the early situation in this round. All right, here we go. Yurikov first blood on this round. Early lead, getting the mix up, another one. Nice block! Oh my god, wrap it up. Doesn't spend the meter though, wants to push all the way to the corner. TK okay, Batman. holding the meter for the TK Batman. Yeah, really, really nice block. That's gonna be up to kill though. Yurikov taking the first game fast and furious to close that one. It's about family. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna hop right back into it. I'm sure Marvel is just gonna hop right back into it. He was not playing terribly at all that match no absolutely not I mean it's, it's very close in a lot of situations I mean it was more just like a like a bad DP which you can't blame him it's first game uh, if you're gonna go for reversals the early is best usually because you let them know early so they'll start factoring that into their mental stack uh, just your cop kind of getting the better of him that it, it, it happens your cop gonna try and make it happen two more times though early on Marfello is using the clone way more yeah, and a clean counter hit there on the wreck. Also, this time Marvello is in full control, putting Yurikov on the back foot. Again, that is such a difficult move to backdash. Yurikov backdash just a little bit too early. You have to delay the backdash. Yeah, unless you're one of the top three backdashes in the game, and like Potemkin and Nagoriyuki, uh, it is incredibly difficult. We can just match it. Yeah. Press the button. Rekka pulls him up, gonna go for the walls, clean combo. Look at the damage, even with the drop, still has a positive situation. And gets the JD, not at the end version though. Perfect. All right, and Marvello closing out game two with a perfect, tying this up 1-1 now. That's, that's kind of what I was alluding to. Like I said, the airborne opponent in the first game usually has the advantage because the grounded player has more adjustments to make. Marvello looking very good in that one. It's up to Yurikov now to kind of switch up the play style a little bit, figure yourself out a little bit more. We cannot go, it can't be just like AFK Capel. We can't fight him on the ground. We still have to abuse our air movement. Just gotta be a little trickier about it. Duel one. Let's rock. All right, Marvello fishing out with that 2D at round start, wanting to get big, big bang for his buck. But he gets hit by a counter hit. Three close slashes, how many you want? Empty dash and throw. Oh, the side switch this time and baiting out the burst. Here, Cobb kind of on one right now. Heavy disc gets the cross up. Round is over, and I, dude, a near perfect again. It's been so back and forth between these two. Just landslide wins. And how the hell did that land on his left side? Oh, another counter hit. Marvel's catching your call, pressing a lot with that Rekka series there. Oh, the 6P, straight into the blender. 
Wins in a row, 6B answered again. Jump over, very nice. Jump heavy, crosses him up. That's a bit of a scrambling situation there, but there's the counter hit into the overhead wreck up, pushing into the corner. OTG, that it's should safe. be a safe jump. No, no, it wasn't. So much damage, too. That absolutely puts Yurikov back into the game. Oh, a nightmare, though. He goes for 2H, and it hits with the wrong side. Oh, it's the wall break. Yurikov, no. That's not what you wanted. All right, fastball into Capel. Change your... Oh, okay, burst. Keep Marvello in the corner, but I like that double, triple jumping and using Alpha Blade to escape the corner. There we go, using Capel. So smart with the movement. It's another throw. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised at all to start seeing some fake discs here to lean into the throw a little bit more. Yurikov is getting an unbelievable amount of mileage out of this. Damn, that positive bonus is going to go a long way. Clean 6P. All this meter building up. You know Yurikov is fine just jumping around, letting the meter passively build up now. Pixel, Pixel, Pixel needs to find anything here. Might be able to make a block the super even to chip him out. He goes for the DP. I want to feel like that's a mistake. Milio was so far away from him. Not only that, but I like the throw option too. Don't even give Marvello the opportunity to burst, to even think about bursting. But that is a 2-1 now. Yurikov only has to win one more to secure his spot in the grand finals. Yurikov. If Yurikov can make it up. And both these characters great. sent to losers by our Happy Chaos players. Yeah, in and grand they finals. both positive matchups, I would say, for the characters that the Happy Chaos beat. Nice pick up with the 2K 2D at the end there. He's able to get the burst out of Yurikov. Hell, really late. Use the block instead of attempting to anti-air there. That was a risky one, but maybe worth the risk. That whiff throw, though, might spell doom. Look at the damage here. And going to allow Melee to swap sides, but your Marvello with great defense. Triple overhead back dashes. He's the Alpha Blade just to get out of trouble. What a use of Capel again. He's using it right at the ground to make micro repositions. Yurikov is playing unbelievable. Yeah, he literally jumped right over the 6P. He said, nice anti air. <laughs> Just Boom. right over it. Got the command throw. Dashes up. 5K is looking good. All right, the Alpha Blade to put Yurikov into the corner here. Plus frames off Gamma Blade. All right, Yurikov finally jumping out of the command grab with the trade. Ooh, okay. Oh no, we're gonna get three close slashes. Yep, get that wall break. Wall break with super? Absolutely. Dude, look at the life bar, man. Oh, Marvello, no more mistakes here. Has plenty meter. I wanna wake up BRC. Yeah, I think that's a great decision. Oh, the throw, OTG. Not quite enough to kill. Yeah, super. He PRC's instead. Oh! oh! The anti air 5P on the other side. Marvello can't get too greedy here. YRC, get off me. Throw tech. What a tech from Yurikov. Oh, try to hit it with the Jade, but there's the throw, and Yurikov is moving on to grand finals for the run back. Damn, a set winning tech there. Marvello snuck it in so well, but he was. And finally, we're going into our grand final set. Yurikov is an old zoomer. I'm calling it. And already, Krieg off to a great start, getting the burst early from Yurikov. Go for the jab, trying to go for push there. Heavy disc, just burst out. I like that positioning, really good call. And I like how Krieg is also willing to just kind of run in and brawl a little bit too when his focus goes away. Oh, Ooh, what a tech! This time it doesn't work out though. Krieg still being pressed in this corner, breaks the wall, and now a huge advantage for Yurikov. All right, wake up YRC off the close slash roll through with the gun, gets the mix. Oh my god, the low air throw. This man is out of his mind right now. He set himself, continuing to fire here. Looking for the frame traps, 2K2D, great poke out from Yurikov, and he's going to win the round for it. Just by the skin of his teeth, too. Okay. I like the round start 60 option there. What a starter though. So much damage. Went into focus. It took a little too long to get out of it. Yeah, unfortunately got knocked down for it. Had to spend his burst now to get away. Oh, 
All right, he is just going for all these gunshots. There we go, focus. Super focus, build it up immediately and get the buff to it. He's gonna get many more gunshots here now. Yeah, this is one of those. Yeah, if you can get across the screen, you start reinvesting time, but like otherwise you're just like tapping FD, dashing forward, start thinking about the next round to be honest. All right, empty other side throw here from Yurkov. Yurkov loves to go for those empty throw mix-ups. Same time, was able to go cross up. Hair car was way too low to be able to combo that. Doesn't break the wall. Clean blocks there from Krieg. Krieg has been, I want Yurkov to remember, Krieg has been bursting on discs. He's reacting to discs in his bursting to make sure that his burst doesn't get baited. So if this burst comes back, no, not even going to get the chance here. Throws him straight out of it. The perfect for Yurikov. But that's an important piece of data that Yurikov needs to recognize, is that Krieg is only bursting on situations that he's guaranteed not getting baited for. He has uh, bursted on a heavy disc, reacting to a heavy disc almost every time. So if you have 50 meter, he can go heavy disc and just like RC backwards. And bait that out. Yeah. For the punish. We'll see though, if Kree even gets put in a situation to need to burst. That's true. I mean, <laughs> this, this man is playing out of his mind, but Yurikov's starting to turn things around from the last game. Last game was kind of a blow up from Kree. So now Yurikov is really putting in work. Run forward, gold burst, amazing stuff. TRC forward, but oh. Get the better of it. I like the YRC option there. Reloads three bullets. Yep. Up guaranteed meaty. Do it again. Three bullets in the chamber. No, it's just gonna super instead. Is that enough to kill? Uh, it will not be. The wall break almost makes it enough. But he just needs one more shot. Yeah, that three was a chip shot. there. Jesus. And the 5D into Gunshot, such an incredible tool for Happy Chaos, but Yurikov getting some momentum going with the throw and the dash forward, forcing the burst out of Krieg with the close slap. Nice. Two to reload, three the situation here, super focus. Keep firing, Bing's gonna reload one bullet every time he gets a chance. There's two this time. Yeah, we are in the arcade playing light gun games right now. That's a death. Yurikov not gonna get a chance to fight there. Yeah, Krieg closing that out. And Melia makes cat noises because she's a she's a cat lady. <laughs> you know. That, that, that's that's literally she just likes cats. She's she's anime cami. <laughs> that's literally what she <laughs> Gold the Beast, man. We just appreciate you being around, dude. It's good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Now with a one-to-one -one Krieg. That was a dominating second game for Krieg. Absolutely. If Krieg is able to establish himself. Can I just say a huge shout out to Wildebeest and to Lena both coming through with $20 direct contributions to the match arena today, guys. Thank you so much for putting that towards the players, uh, investing in these guys. We appreciate that a lot. Again, guys, there's no codes to use. It's going to be acting even after Grand Finals, so make sure you guys go check that out. But there's the super in response. He cancels to avoid the projectile. Just jumps over and shoots my man. Shoots my man, Yurikov. <laughs> Krieg is gaming really hard tonight. Okay. Little shoot two. Staying with the frame traps here. 5D. Yeah, he's going to get that wall slump. Here we go. Straight to Deus Ex Machina. Wall broken, positive bonus. Couldn't be better for Creek here. One of the only characters in the game that you'll see back dash. He does a command dash backwards when he gets a break wall break with Super. He says, I'm out of here. <laughs> Guaranteed curse, say less. And that is 2 1 now. Creek threatening tournament. One game away. That's all he needs. Yurkov needs to dig deep and find something because he is just holding these bullets. Yeah, I was gonna say, absolute bullet holes everywhere here so far. Krieg just needs to find one more opportunity like that and can close it out. Yurikov has to reset and needs a full set to bring it back. Okay, counter and blocks the burst. This is exactly what Yurikov needs. What a tech though. Same side, heavy disc, goes low again. The low is working out. Yeah, fully charged dust to break the wall. It's positive bonus, already has 50 meter on deck. Spends it to the RC forward. But forced to spend the burst to escape Krieg's pressure there. Okay, answers, pulling the gun. Good way to extend that on the launcher. 
reload. Oh God, there's the Deus Ex Machina. Yeah, didn't even want to reload, just wanted to cash out. And that is so much damage too. And this is not where your cup wants to be. We are on tournament point, guys. Creed is just, man's just like, I got a gun. <laughs> and I ain't afraid to use it. Absolutely shooting him up at every single turn here. Has him stuck to the wall now. Another great anti-air. He's gonna break the wall here with another gunshot. He has almost full focus here too. Yurikov, there's the throw. This is how you're gonna get back in this game. So jump over. Does nothing afterwards though. Sends a full screen. This is a nightmare. All right, there's the 2D for the mix-up. YRC though from Krieg. Grabs the 2S. Board was so smart. Another great tech. Krieg is unthrowable. Remember when Gun is out, Krieg cannot block. What a trade. trade. What a trade. That's One more gunshot could do it here. He pulls oh, the Oh, the BRC to get through the gunshot. That BRC in reaction to ready, <laughs> to the ready aim stance to get through the gunshot. My God, you're a call. Oh, and picks that up with the close flash. Very nice stuff. Breaking the wall here. Chooses not to break the wall. Instead, chases him down. I like that. Do not reset neutral against Happy Chaos if you can't get an advantage. If there's that oh my God, gold burst. This is how it gets. This is the worst possible situation now, though. He missed a reload. That's okay, though. Actually relieved a lot of the pressure on the missed reload. Uh -oh. He's going to uh -oh. confirm. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Into the wall break? No, he used almost nearly all his shots but still wasn't able to get to the wall. Okay. PRT off the S disc. Really nice. He takes a kill. Two guns. Oh. The low air throw again. He's been so consistent with that whenever Yurikov tried. And that's it. Oh, my God. And that shot is all it's going to take. Yurikov was very close in a lot of these situations. But Krieg has shown to be a 